Welcome to Brett Finch's Uncensored. Uncensored brought to you by PointsBet. Check out all PointsBet's great odds and offers. Download the PointsBet app today. My next guest, one of my favourite teammates, a legend of the game, one of Parramatta's legends, Eric Crouch Jr. Guru, how you going, mate? I'm very well, mate. How's things? Uh, good, mate. Good. Very busy. Mm. I was just talking to you off air about the uh, I do a marquee high business and mm. I just never expected mm. so many people to need marquees, mate. That's, that's <laughs> ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. I can't cope. I'm yeah. going to put someone on for admin because doing the admin and the work, it's just too much. How has that gone with um, all the drums this year with COVID and that? Did it yeah. suffer there? Well, when that kicked in, obviously the events industry took a bit of a hit. and um, But then slowly people started realising you could have backyard parties. Mm. So we kind of do a lot of backyard parties. So it started to help us a little bit in mm. regards to compared to other poor blokes who their whole – Industry, yeah, yeah, they're buggered, you know. So we did all right in that regard. But, um, mate, now, because of Christmas and because of the restrictions of easing, it's just my phone. Honestly, I just want to peg it. <laughs> I just want to throw it and just run in the opposite direction like Gump for about yeah. three years. <laughs> it's, it's, isn't it funny? Is it like, well, what business can I get into to get a bit of work but not too busy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it started off, I thought, oh, it's all right. It's about 20 hours a week because mm. you do weekend work because it's marquees. People having parties on weekends. But... Dickhead didn't realise there's holidays and <laughs> midweek. Wait, I'm driving to freaking Narrabeen for getting 40 chairs, having to go back to Camden <laughs> to get the 40 chairs to go back to Narrabeen just so someone doesn't want to slap me. <laughs> oh. oh, well, mate, let's start back. You're back out of Camden. You grew up out in the West, didn't you? That's... I did, mate. I was born in Liverpool and I was there till I was about 10 and moved to Campbelltown. And yeah, all the footies kind of, mainly all the footy stuff happened out that way. Eagle Valley, Eagle Valley, right? St Andrews. Yeah, they were the enemy. They beat us. I was playing for Mounties. Mounties, Mounties yeah. Um, and um, they beat us in a in a like a combined uh, knockout meet once, yep. and I thought I'd never play for them. And then next minute, that coach came to our house because we'd moved to the area and said, "Come play for us." I was like, "Yeah, no." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won. They were like Melbourne. Yeah. They just won everything, and so, I was like, "I'm jumping straight yeah. into that." I'm, I'm never playing for that team. Yeah. I used to hate Cameron Smith, and then when they club <laughs> wanted me, they said, "Do you want to play for us?" And he's a boat in a car under the table. I said, "I'm, I'm right there." He's the best player in the world. <laughs> My best mate. Uh, mate, obviously growing up, uh, you're born. You're a year older than me, so 1980. You're born. I'm oh, 81. Yeah. And and you think when you think rugby league, you think 80s. You know, the, there's the only the one and only the mighty Parramatta Eels, the blue and golds, and and the great run. Obviously, uh, you, you're taught your dad, uh, senior Eric Rose, senior one of the, the great wingers, if not the greatest wing of all time. Was dominant through there. What do you remember of, of growing up those times? Do you remember going about going to the footy and going to training? Yeah, mate, I, I remember a lot of it. I actually got a much better memory about all that than what happened yesterday. <laughs> but, um, mate, I just remember it, I, I used to spin out like because at the time Parramatta were like so big, a god, in, in like where we were living too, mm. out the west, you know, in Liverpool and Campbelltown, and everyone knew who dad was. So if we go shopping and stuff, like everyone would run around him and just the hysteria of it, and so. Being on that side of it, it was weird. I was a bit shy, but I never wanted to talk about it. I used to get embarrassed. Like, I thought that people would think that I was a show-off if I talked about my dad or whatever. So I just was always quiet about it. But, mate, it was awesome just going to training and going in the sheds and those guys knowing me as, like, Mm. you know, their little nephew type thing and, like, Uncle Brett Kenny and Peter Sterling and all these legends, you know. It was phenomenal. And I didn't realise until I got older how – how lucky I was to grow yeah. up in that. A lot of people would just, die just to that. be at, in the in the mm. in in a sanctum of, of a rugby league team, you know. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got to see that. That was cool. Yeah, well, obviously you know, know me. I'm a footy historian, footy nerd. You know, I loved it. So when I come to Paramount, I was trying to catch up with you and want you to invite your dad more than I wanted. Yeah, to that's <laughs> it. most people do, mate. I'm used to. Hey, Kira, have you always is your dad coming from Paramount? <laughs> yeah. But but your dad was, you know. This, Senior was he, – he was like you. You said that laid back, you know. you got to remind you to breathe you that laid back, you know what I mean? He's, a, yeah. he's, a, he's such chill guys. Your dad would have been like that even when he was played. He looks like, you know, he, you know, obviously you get some blokes who know that, you know, when you're playing career, you're up and about. And, but, you know, yeah, he, Senior was pretty – he was laid back no matter what. Yeah, he was like a, um, like a, a soft-hearted guy caught in a – body that was able to just Crush run bike. straight through things, you know, and he was fast and muscly and naturally as well, before he even started lifting weights and things, like he was naturally pretty gifted, fast and strong, you know. So obviously as the years go on, that kind of starts levelling out mm. and that's my excuse for not being as good as him is that <laughs> everyone else is even better. Um, but, mate, I, I, I remember him running down the sideline and just seeing your dad do that, like, you know, you look up to your father as yep. a superhero anyway. To add that to it, he was like a true superhero yeah. to me. You know? Do you remember going to any of the, the games or the yeah, grand finals? Yeah. I remember the 1980 
it's so weird. I have a memory of the 1982. I was two. Yeah. And I've got the memory of when his dad was wearing a different jersey and I knew that that was wrong. Yeah. And he picked he, – there's a photo of it and now that I see the photo of it, like I remember the day yeah. in the back story of it all. It's crazy mm. to be two years old and remember that. But um, I remember that and I remember the 86 grand final pretty yeah. clearly because I was six then. So mm. – I um, had made posters and stuff and I was in the whole fanfare yeah. of it all. So that was cool to see them win that, yeah. yeah. I, you know, my dad played, played at the Dragons and, you know, as far back as I can remember, I wanted to be a footy player. Yep. Is that, did you always want to play footy or – because um, I know you, as we'll, and we'll get into, you've, always, you've had, you know, different interests in music and yep. some other, other things along the yep. way, but was that always a goal early or was it that just sort of progressed as you got older? Mate, I just thought that that's what you did. Yeah. I thought you would, I, you do it. I just didn't – whether you wanted to or not, like, I didn't even tell my parents I didn't really want to. Like, they could see it some weekends I wasn't into it. And Dad used to say to me all the time, mate, don't just play because I want – like, you think I want you to. If you don't want to play footy, whatever you want to do, mate. He was so good like that. He didn't care. He's very soft like that. But, yeah, I, I – mate, I – what, what was your question? What was your question? <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh, I always wanted to be it from the yeah. start. Well, no. Did, I, or did you just, I just played thought you did. Yeah. I thought you did, so – I used to think, I remember thinking like when I was around 10 years old and we'd be talking to my other mates and I'd be thinking, oh, when we're older and we're playing footy yeah. first grade and that, like I used to think that's what we're all going to do. And then you realise as you get older, you're like maybe the only one in your group yeah. or there's maybe another one yeah. that you played with growing up that you see not cut through and it's just a different world. Next minute I was in it yeah. and I didn't really think I would be. So it was the different for, yeah, really like yeah. looking at it like, oh, I've got to do it, I've got to yeah. do it, yeah. Did you have a favourite player? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so Ricky it. Stewart. Oh, he's oh, hilarious. Well, f- first of all, uh, H- hilarious. And oh. then, then he coached both of us and fucking oh, hammered mate, us. Fuck, that changed, that changed yeah. everything. No, is this your favourite player? He wasn't your favourite coach. No, mate, it, I'll tell you what, I, as, as tough as some of the coaches I had was, they taught me everything, even not just about footy, but mental toughness. Like, Sticky, yeah. if you weren't ready for war every morning, yeah. you. Well, you weren't going to survive, yeah. and we survived it. Our training was harder than games, mate. It was. Yeah. It wasn't. What it was, honestly yeah. was. He he wanted to get you into that zone where you're about to die, and mm. keep you there for and see how long it takes you to die. <laughs> I'm like, mate. And I remember being on the field sometimes, buggered, thinking, I'm, I've done this. I mean, I've done worse than this, you know. So it was good for that. Mm. I thought. I, thought I, I, I remember really just good. talking on Sticky. Uh, you get it. We'll touch on it, but you're at the Roosters when when I come to the Roosters. Yep. And, and we had sand hills one of the first weeks and um, we went out the Friday night, sorry, the Saturday, the week before or whatever, and we are out in the piss and um, I, obviously we're pretty drunk. We're back at your place there because I just lived around the corner and I start showing off going, oh, I'll ring Ronnie Palmer, our trainer, and spray him and tell him how easy these sand hills are going to be. <laughs> Remember we did the sand hills yeah. that following week and no one said anything all week, no trainers, and I thought, I've got away with it. Ronnie didn't, yeah. Ronnie didn't get the message. <laughs> and we trained for hours and it finished and he goes, um, by the way, someone's uh, someone was ringing me drunk last week. Oh, the and remember, I got and remember said they that. said, because it was me and you, but you were there when you made the call. And I, knowing me, I'm just like, I'm, I don't know who it was. And they're going, if, if, so, if anyone, if I own up to it now, we can go home. If not, we're doing more. And you go, oh, I did it, I did it. Oh, and they go, it wasn't you, it was your mate next to you. And I was sitting there going, oh, that was funny. <laughs> mate, that, that day, it was hot. It was hot as it can be. And it was, I remember we did 26 sand hills and that, he sat us down after the 26th yeah. one. We'd done them in, like, different group blocks. And he said, righto, and he called us out. And that's why I was just like, mate, get me the f-. – there was flies. <laughs> it was that hot. It's the only time I've ever seen Craig Fitzgibbon on all fours because yeah. he couldn't breathe. Like, I've never seen him buckled in fitness. Yeah. He was rat shit, mate. It was breaking blokes. That was the toughest. That was probably one of the tougher days yeah. I've ever done. Let me tell you, well, I made some plenty of drunk phone calls in my life, but there was no more to <laughs> Ronnie Palmer after that. No. Uh, how were you at school? What, what was your schooling like? Uh, oh, Awful. I, I went really good when I was really young because I was good at spelling and yep. and maths when I was young. And then it just from year three onwards, it just went pear shaped. Mm. I don't know what happened. I got distracted easy and I became just. I basically lagged the whole of mm. high school and then I left early mm. to uh, what did I do? I, I started year twelve and then I left and did nothing for a while and then I was playing footy. Yeah. What do you think? Because you're, super, you're super smart and like intelligent. Oh, thanks, well, you are. You know, you're actually quite artistic and creative. And do you think that at school that was the reason why you're always thinking uh, something else? I, don't or? Know. I think I was. Mate, I don't know if it's been diagnosed. Everyone tells me I've got some sort of ADD there somewhere. Mm. I think they'd say everyone's got. It I'm tripolar. If that's yeah, it. Tripolar. <laughs> yeah. You're making up emotions. <laughs> are not even there. Um, yeah, mate. I I don't know. I, 
I think a little bit. I feel a bit weird sometimes when I'm like what the stuff that I'm into. Like not a lot of blokes are into music as much as I am, and yeah. I used to talk about it sometimes and get it, say some certain words around some mates, like footy mm. mates, and they're looking at me like, "What are you talking about?" In the, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, no. Nah. Well, mate, we we go into footy, and uh, in '99, round '19 versus Cowboys, you you make your debut, and obviously. Uh, because I remember obviously being a younger coming through, you were quite well known as a good good young player coming through. What were your memories of that game? You just win 24-12. Yep. Um, and obviously not only for you individually you making your debut, it's just en- as anyone, it's a big deal. You know, the surname, it was the full name. Your did, name. We, did we win that? Yeah. Because my memory of that is that we lost. No, you yeah, won 24-12. Because it's uh, funny like how your ego takes over because – I didn't play that good, so I feel like we lost. But yeah. now looking back, I'm like, mate, you're in a team, he's won, get yeah. over. But, yeah, I thought we'd lost that. But I do remember the game. I remember finding out about it. I was sitting in um, the auditorium at the Leagues Club yeah. Para. Carl Barron was about to go on. And just before Carl Barron was about to go on, I'm watching the best, like, one of the, at best. the time, my favourite comedians or whatever, in a relaxed state of mind. And Luke Burke goes, oh, Guru, by the way, I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm playing first grade this week. And then Carl Barron comes on. And I'm just <laughs> like, going, you can't well, hey, 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 what'd hey, you say? Hey. Are you sure he's going? Yeah, you sure? Yeah, you sure? I'm going, mate, what the fuck? He's got that feeling. Oh, he goes, you'll be right, mate. Yeah, you'll be outside me, so just get ready. They're going to tell you. And sure enough. You, you, you'll be outside me. You're going to have to make all these tackles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mate, I'll tell you what. The first couple of games, mate, I didn't know what was. It was just I just the whole big occasion of mm. it all. And, and everyone made such a big deal of it. I, I didn't so much. But because of the big deal everyone else was making, it became a big deal. And I remember in the second game, we were playing Wes. And I had a bit. Of, I didn't play great in that first game. My first Second touch game. of the ball, the first one against Cowboys, I got the ball, ran up, re- they kicked it down, ran it back, return, tackle, popped out the back, they kicked it through <laughs> and scored. <laughs> well, that's what I was about to say, but Your second game. Yeah. Now, yes. I, now, I have a memory of this second game, and I used to take the piss out of you, but it's one of my favourite memories. You, you smash them. And this is when it was West Magpies before they moved. Like, you was win 68-10 to 10 at Campbelltown, and you score your first try. Now, I re- and this is how weird I am. I remember exactly what it was and how long it was, and it was a, <laughs> like, it was a ripping try. Um, talk us through that. You, the, okay. That game, what you remember. Well, that game, so after the, my first game, I didn't. Uh, Brian Smith wanted me not to talk to the press and that. Oh, I didn't think it was a big deal, but in hindsight, I think it was a good move because I probably wouldn't have coped or whatever. But um, it was some bad press, apparently. So. Everyone was saying, oh, he's suspect and all that. He didn't play that good and he's still got to work on this and that. And so I was like, oh, shit. Anyway, the night before the next game, I go to my mate's place and he's got a few mates around. They're having a party and he starts handing beers around and I've, next minute I've got a beer. Next minute it's one in the morning and I've got to play my second first grade game tomorrow and I'm pretty pissy. Like, I got there pretty early. And I'm like, I've got to get home. I've got to cab home, woke up. And I just – one of the – I never get crook from the piss, but I don't know if it was just God or something mm-hmm. saying, mate, you won't be doing this too often. I felt that crook all day, real seedy, warming up. It was that hot. And we ran on and we've made a couple. I've had one run and I've just started spewing like that much liquid. Like it must have just been all the beer and all the Gatorade I tried to compensate with hydration in that next day at the, at the warm-up. And I was chucking up my guts and Birdie's just next to me and Kevin McGuinness and that are over there watching it. And I'm just going, Rawr! just trying to get back in like in the line of defence and, and, uh, and, and just be there. And Birdie's looking at me, going, oh, "What's wrong with you?" And he's like, nearly crying. I'm going, "Shut the fuck up, <laughs> just Ralphing, mate." And and thank God we smacked them. Like, mm. We just started scoring tries left, right, and centre. And my try was later. The heat was off, so mm. I remember getting the ball off the scrum. scrum. And I just ran. And it was no about one, 60, 70 meters. Um, yeah, I can't remember. It was a, yeah. like a decent, decent yeah, sprint. Long. And um, I just remember. No one really seemed to touch me. Yeah. They kept kind of. Now when I look at it, it's like they're just kind of tripping over each yeah. other in the back to get to me. So, yeah, I think Brett Hodges maybe got a little arm on me or something. But um, yeah, you Hodgson. remember? I remember you steamrolled up the scrum. You took a carry off scrum straight through boot two, and then yeah, pinned your ears. But my favourite reaction was: Do you remember Smithy's reaction? I, do, I, I do. remember taking. They crossed to uh, Brian Smith. He was on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. it, it was like the proudest phone on the yeah. in my life. Because <laughs> I remember when we used to go to any time you'd be a trainer, I'd go, Guru, you do something good. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, it's like that's and your his mate. To, the, the, good, because just one eighty six to ten. You see him every other try. He's yeah, sitting no there emotion, giving yeah. yours. He's up. Just he you know, he's proudest, proudest. And, and for that, um, the camera went on him at the worst possible moment. 
because in video, when we watched that game back and we're watching all the highlights and it went to him doing that and the whole room in video went, oh, <laughs> and he went, he and went fucking he, red. He went as red as that points bet. <laughs> and I'm telling you, mate, he goes, he goes, I'm laughing. I'm smiling because I've got a job next week. How are all you yeah. going? And just left the room. And we all just went, oh, oh not so, not so oh, funny oh, now. Oh, oh, <laughs> mate, that, that year you go on and you just play a qualifying final against the Knights, you play in the semis, you score a try. In the semis, do you remember much of the, the back end of that um, year? Against the Knights, was it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I do. I do. Um, well, it was pretty mad because mm. the year before I wasn't playing footy. So yeah. for now, three now years, I didn't play final. for three years and I'm in a frigging final. And just the severity of the situation and the media surrounding it was like, like this is yeah. like, I'm a little bit like, I'm kind of new to this, but I can see yeah. how crazy this is getting. And, mate, we beat the Knights. And I remember scoring a try for some, I think it might have been a Stu Kelly kick yeah. or a Dave Penner kick. Um, and that feeling of – that was the first where I really realised how big this – I remember putting that ball down here in the roar Crown. from Paris Stadium. Was it Paris Stadium? Yeah, yeah it was Paris Stadium. Yeah. And as I slid over, I just kind of put my hand in and slid over and just the roar, and I just went, wow, what a moment. Like, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget that. That was a very, very pivotal moment in, in starting to realise the severity of what I was in. Yeah, well, the, <clears throat> sitting there, things are looking pretty bright. Now, 2000, you play about nine games. 2001, you just sit out the whole season. Yeah. What was, what was that? Was that through injury or? Injury, yeah. So my knee, I had a pretty bad. Actually, when I got picked for Origin in 2000. Sorry, yeah, Gabe, because you were. Yeah, I got picked for. Right? From there, oh. so you start the year and you're one of the form wingers and you get picked in Origin. Well, yeah, I, I, I'd played 12 first grade games yeah. and they picked me, right? So I thought, oh, okay, like, far out. You, but in the. Actually, I scored this try against Penrith and it was a decent try. Like, I beat a few guys and at the very end, I had to reach out and someone had to hold me leg and it kind of just. Pulled my leg out a little bit, dislodged it, and it just sw- got swollen, and it was stuffed. And I played the next week, then got picked, mm. and I carried that in quietly into yeah, origin. origin. And I went in there, and I remember Liz Steet and or- Dr. John Orchard looking at each other when they do the examination on day one of all the players, and my knee was really swollen and purple, off colour and all that, and they looked at each other and they went, I said, no, no, it'll be all right. It always does. As you do as a kid. I said, it's all right. It'll be all right. As the week went on, like, I didn't really, I wasn't professional. I wasn't going to physio every five minutes. Everyone was out drinking back then, like, mm. and I was you're trying to fit in and go with the team and that. Mate, by the time the game, the day before the game, my knee was like oh, a dead oh. set, just a balloon. So I couldn't play. And it was, it was through that injury that, you know, was that the catalyst for the, the that next year? So, yeah, so, so, so that carried on. Get worse I went back to para, didn't play for a few weeks, tried to get the knee swelling down and then, Started playing and I was playing just shit, right. reserve yeah. grade, and then couldn't get it. And then that next year, well, I went and got a second opinion after the falling out with Parrot at the time. And the, do- uh, the doctor I went and saw, Dr. Merv Cross, said, mate, you're three months away from playing. Well, he's the best in the, one of the best in the well, business. And he cleaned my knee. He said he did an arthroscope on my knee that took an hour and a half. They usually take 35, 40 minutes. Mm. Um, and he just gra- got all the – he goes, no wonder you're in so much pain. It's so swollen. There's so much jagged bone at the mm. back of the kneecap there. So that made sense. He's done that. Took me a year to get the muscle back to mm. enough to be able to play, and then I got better slowly. But the first couple of years, you know, I, I was struggling. Like yeah. my balance, and just I felt so weak and vulnerable in certain positions until 2004. After actually, Ricky Stewart put me through. He, he said, "Mate, I don't care if your knee breaks. You're going to do everything I ask of you." I did it, and I got through the test eventually. Got the swelling down enough to be able to build on it. You know? Well, before going to the Roosters, what were you off contract that year at, at, at the Para? How did that fall out there? Because it's, I think I. Was there a falling out there? Yeah, or there was you, a falling just... out. There was a falling out. And, and a lot of it was myself to blame, not being professional in terms of looking after my injury. But, but you are a kid. You're only 20, 21. I was young and I was like Smithy's naughty boy. Like, you no. know what I mean? He had like all guys who were there in the program, all focused. I was a bit just new to it. It's a bit crazy to me, this whole seriousness of footy. Because yeah. when I was playing before that, it was still kind of get the ball and do your best yeah. a little bit. You know, you're starting to learn lines and, and unders do, do and overs. Do you think because you had the ability, like you could get the ball and steamroll eight bucks. I'm not saying it came easy, but you oh. you were big and athletic and strong. You know, like the, the battler has to work, you know, the little shorter boat. Yeah, was it, yeah. Was oh. there because of that because you were such a good young player that, you oh. know, sometimes it might take a year or two to get shit, I've got to put my head down now, you know. What yeah, I mean? well, it, was, it, wasn't, it didn't really work in my favour to – kind of have a bit of natural talent growing mm. up to kind of when you're playing younger guys and you're fast and big naturally mm. and that you haven't trained yet to even out, like you're going to score a long field try every game maybe, you know, yeah. or two maybe. 
And and then as you get older, it was, hang on, what was your question? Yeah, that's un- is, that, is that why you, with the professional, you said you weren't all in professional. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I thought, is that because that, mate, because you're so good as a junior, it sort of took maybe shit once now while well, you're at the professional. Yeah, honestly, I You I could agree, get away yeah. with it a I little reckon. bit for a little while. Yep, I reckon. And I reckon it's the same mentality with the schoolyard bully mentality. Mm. The big guys at school, like the blokes like Dave Taylor, and, and they're naturally big. No one wants to test them at school. They never yeah. go through a test. They never yeah. have to fight for something. A lot of smaller guys who yeah. are terriers because they've had to fucking fight for yeah. every single thing they've had. Yeah. yeah, every single thing in their lives they've had to fucking scream yeah. and kick for, you yeah. know? A big bloke doesn't get tested. When you start getting to a man and you start getting tested, you can see a big scared bloke and thing, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's the same kind of thing, yeah. that kind of same, yeah. same mentality. Yeah. So, so you go to the Roosters. What made you sign with the, sign with the Roosters? Because Well, the falling out with Para. I had yeah. no club. And I was b- broken. Was he there a was chance to get me. back there? No. What's that? Was there was no chance to repair that at Parra? Because oh, obviously well, down the track you go back there. Down but down the track. But at, at the that time, time no. no it seemed and like, you needed a change? Yeah, I reckon I needed a change, mate, just to get out of the whole Parramatta yeah. thing. That was a bit of expectation there, which I didn't realise until I was right in the thick of it. Yeah. And then I was like, shit, this is such a thing for everyone. Fuck, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Get me out of here and I don't have to fucking think about the connection there. I'll just do my own thing at the Roosters yeah. anyway. Spent... Great time at the Roosters. I didn't play a lot of first grade, but just what you learn mm. when you look back in hindsight, yeah. I'm glad I did it. Went back to Parra and played my best footy pretty yeah, much. Yeah, we talk um, talk about the time at the Roosters. You go there, 0-2, they win in an A3. That's when I come there. But um, you know, how, how, do you, how do you think, how was your time under Sticky and, and Freddie? Did you enjoy Because uh, so no, oh, you were a popular I, member there of the club. Oh, and you've been, you're have been an extremely popular member at any team you've been in. I, I absolutely love loved my time at the Roosters. Like, people... Think, like who like footy and, and ask questions about footy think that uh, that was a, a low point of my mm. career, which, yeah, in a lot of ways it was because I wasn't playing first grade, but look who I met, man. Like, yeah. Look at the people I know now. Like, mm. I lived with Fitzy, and we all know how good a bloke he is. He's like a bloody big brother to me a bit, yeah. you know, and all these people you meet, and, and you learn from that. Like, for me, not doing so well there, how to do well at the next place you go to. You can't say it was shit. Yeah. And if you're looking back and you're bitter about that shit, you're just not developed in the fucking mm. brain to look outside your own self a bit maybe you know yeah. well, I, I think it was a great time I had a great time there best time but how good was the freaking nights out honestly mm. I, I found the um, yeah well I, obviously I'm, I debuted down in Canberra and then when I come to Sydney I live in Cronulla the first yeah. 12 months and, and you and, and Fitzy and Stuart Stuart Webb and the field of the boys yeah. at Cronulla so we're carpooling in and I remember when I had Rico's 30th birthday mm. and it was I was at that grouse house at Timber oh, That's right on the, on the cliff face. And like, I've been, I'm Newcastle, can you? Know, I'm coming, and this is my first big party. Yeah, that's right. And we're yeah. sitting there going, how good's this? How good's this? The shield everywhere. Oh. And, but that was certainly, you know, certainly the, that Roosters team, they had the ability to train super hard and super successful during that time. Yeah. But fuck. They drunk hard and, oh, and partied hard, didn't they? It, it was, was every just, weekend it after was the game. Both ends yeah. of the candle were burning, and it was just like blokes like Mick Crocker, like winning every hard session at training and then drinking and staying out for th- two, three days, mm. like on just beer benders mm. and freaking. Oh, man. Yeah. It's just, it was just, it had to finish. It had yeah. to come to an end. It was like something was going to burst. And yeah. Eventually, obviously, you can't keep that. But people don't give credit for stick. Like, yeah, he got the four grand. Well, how many? Three, three, grand three in a row. He won one yeah. in his first year. He won the first one, and then the second and third year got to the grand final, final and was fucking competitive. Like, yeah. and, and he it, gets hammered. And <laughs> it's funny when you, you look at like we were talking about earlier, you, you, your dad's team at Paramount. They they won the three in a row, eighty one, eighty two, eighty three, and they're known as one of the greatest teams ever. I look at say Manly in the mid nineties. They made ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, but only won ninety six. So you don't remember them. That's as good. it. The, the yeah. Roosters made two thousand, two thousand two, three, four, and only won the one. So yep. you're this close to winning four, or you're yeah. this close to winning three. Yeah. You know, and yeah. because you don't win them, you're not remembered as a. That's you it. Know, and, and why is that? It's because of the edit of the of the all the um, production behind it all. You just considered someone who didn't win yeah, something. Just like, yeah, but what about if they put that at the start? Like how hard it is to, to get to a the, grand final three times, and that yeah. was the goal. Like yeah. you'd be the king. They'd be the kings. You know what I mean? I remember our uh, three. We went on a trip away to Darwin. Yeah. End of day three, and it was, it was me, uh, you, Stewie Webb, Toddy Byrne, Chris Flannery, yeah. um, Toddy Payton. 
Big Toddy Payton, the Cowboys coach now. I love telling Big stories. Chad Robbo. Chad Robbo. God bless his soul. Yeah. I, I love telling stories about Toddy now because I <laughs> always get the text message going, mate, I'm a coach now. You can't be. <laughs> I know. He got, same he with took, Johnny Morris. He took me yeah. up to the Warriors and I'm sitting there going, boys, anyway, me and Toddy from the age of 18 <laughs> yeah. and I can see Toddy in the background. So <laughs> he just goes, mate, I'm a coach now. They've got a, I can't hear these stories. <laughs> But I remember we were going, we had a couple of big nights on the drink and Webby, Stuart Webb, had organised um, a fishing charter. And we were all like, fuck, we don't want to go on this fishing charter. Like, especially blokes like, one, fuck especially blokes like me and you who fuck, you know, you can't sit still alone in a boat. Oh, 60 degrees and, in the shade up yeah, there and, and anyway, we get on that uh, minibus, we're going out there and Ducky's, Webby, whose nickname's Ducky, going, <laughs> duck's back, here we go, duck's back. And he goes, pull, pull over for a second. And the next minute he was out the window spewing and turning back on. Duck's not back. <laughs> the duck's not back. <laughs> Mate, that's one of the classic lines of the trip. Mate, what a fucking blur that is, that Darwin trip. It was so hot. But, gee, I, I remember, I think, we are planning to go somewhere else through the year. And then at the last second, everyone just started pulling out. I remember we at the airport, Freddie didn't turn Freddie up on the day. Freddie was supposed to come. We were like, oh, fuck. We're, next minute we're in Darwin. We're walking around a fair in Darwin outside. It's dead set at night time and it's 100 degrees. Well, we- well Webby had organised it through oh. his sister-in-law oh. or someone and we were a Tuesday oh, on a darn with a case of hot... Case of VBs that are hot as hell. Oh, we're yeah. sitting under the tree and we're going, Webby, are you kidding? What, like, what are Mate, you done? All year, you're like that pump for your trip right. away. And I remember looking around thinking, this is the fucking yeah. lowest point. Toddy Payton had his foot in the boot and he's getting <laughs> lugging around the big... We kept forgetting he was with us and then look so, back and you're just dragging that big hoof, <laughs> <laughs> that big hoof with him. Well, mate, 2004, <laughs> you go back to para. As you spoke about, um, you know, had a bit of falling out there. How did that uh, reconcile itself and, and, and come about to, to go back? Back to the Eels. Uh, yeah, I was, um, where was I? I can't remember where I was, but I remember Hayden, <laughs> <laughs> Hayden Knowles and Jason Taylor were in a hotel room for para, yeah. like staying somewhere the night before or whatever, and they called me and said, oh, Guru, J- uh, JT and I were just talking. You've got to get back to para. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's not going to happen. And he's like, mate, leave it with us. We'll, we'll chat. So I think they went and chat to Smithy. He was keen. Because obviously I'd grown up a little bit. My knee was better now I was playing, so Smithy was like, all right, have another crack. Smithy came and picked me up in this hot red sports convertible <laughs> car. We got in his car and like, you know how small, like how big I am, like and tall and that. He's tiny and he's in this little sports car and I'm basically sitting on his lap. <laughs> I haven't seen him since we've had an argument. And I'm sitting there, hey Smithy, you're going <laughs> And we're just sitting there and he was just driving around Cronulla and he's going, so uh, things are different now, eh, mate? And I just started going, oh. Yeah, things yeah, are different, mate, you're I, driving a sports car. Yeah, so I still didn't expect this. I said, mate, look, I'm not going to say that I'm all of a sudden this whole new person, but I guess my knee's better and I've been training hard and, I've, yeah, I know what it requires to be a first-grade footballer now and I was just lying to get <laughs> in. And the next minute I was back at para. And that's uh, that's when I started to find my feet a little bit, yeah. mature a bit in, in terms of being a professional more so. Mm. And I had a couple of good years and I had a shit year and a couple of good years and a shit year and then finished. The, um, Sorry, I skipped d- through all that. No, I yeah, no, but before, just before... I actually forgot to mention when you were at the Roosters. I remember at one game, I think we were playing the Broncos in those three. Oh. They, did you put into the back row by Ricky? <laughs> yeah. He goes, uh, I think he, I think because I was liked by people at the club, he kind of, I just, he wasn't cutting me. I was kind of a fucking reserve winger. And he put me on dead set 20 minutes at the end of a game and go, right, oh, do something special on the wing. I'm like, fucking right, eh? So he goes, right, eh, next week I'll put you in the forwards. I was thinking, no, he's not. And sure enough, we're playing Broncos at Suncorp. The world's biggest forward pack. I know. And he goes, guru, second row. And I just went, <laughs> a beauty. So I've gone on and I remember, mate, for about eight minutes I was on, I just ran around in circles going, because <laughs> the rhythm you got to get in there. Like, I'm, I've got rhythm. I yeah. just didn't know. Yeah. I didn't get it. And then I thought, okay. And finally that someone dropped the fucking ball. I think I fucking tried to do it on purpose. <laughs> And we got a breather, yeah. and I remember just looking across, and everyone just looked at me. I just looked like a, a just a wreck, and I fucking went packed the scrum, and I thought I've got to make a tackle. I haven't done anything. I've just been running in circles. So I thought I'm making the next tackle. So I look up, and Webkey, he's just got <laughs> fucking two horns, and he's just going, like, and he just ran straight at me. Luckily, everyone just kind of collided, and we all just fell over. But um, I remember when I walked off the field, I walked past Sticky. He was on the bench, and he had this dirty grin on his face. Like they were all happy they did it, and I walked past and said. Don't you ever fucking do that to me again. <laughs> I remember he put me at hooker to start the 2006 oh, season. So it's mad, it's mid-March when That's the season the starts. Season. And it's a 1,000 degrees. We're out playing out at Homebush against um, South. 
And I remember just – and like you said, when you're on the edge, or you can make – you can sort of tell sometimes it's not coming your way so you don't even have to go up. When you're in the middle, you've got to go you've up. You've got, got to be. So I'm like third, fourth man into the tackle. Anyway, I'd weasel my way down into the tackle to get on top. <laughs> you know when I'm pulling everyone else <laughs> yeah. back? So I can get it marker. And I'd get it marker, then look up and say, which way is the ball going? If the ball was going that way, I'm saying, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go that way. Or then, then like someone would come to the sideline. I was looking over this. And it'd be like someone who was, you could tell, it was a forward going to replace a forward, but I was going, well, if he comes on and he moves yeah. to here and he moves, <laughs> yeah. this could be for me, yeah. I get a break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but Mate, what about when it was um, un- unlimited interchange? I was I was having a big run, might like have a big run, get tackled. Smithy was getting me off for three, four minutes, get your breath Come back. back on. I was going, I could do this forever. You could play to your fifth. Well, that's what you used to do as a halfback. You'd take 10, 15 minutes to set up to get the, the opposition forward tied and then you draw the one in goal, you yeah. got repeat set, you go, here we go, here's this big play. And four All that work come up. and just replace them, now deal with that. It's yeah, like it's, an NFL team, you know, like come yeah. on and off. It was good for me, but look, looking at it from that point of view, yeah, bloody hell. Well, after you go back 04, um, and then Parrot, how did you just go that year? mate, the semis that year? I think uh, we might have got to the semis and maybe got knocked out in the first round or very close yeah. to the semis, yeah, or... Maybe we went to the last game and it was decided. Yeah, by that we, game. we we played the, the Shooks played um, power the last game, but that's 05, right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, was that that game? That was the last game. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. And in '05, it's it's a great year. It was, we're going to talk about the team first. Actually, no, we'll talk about you first because it's it's probably it's one of your best years. And you and you named Dalliam Winger of the Year. What what was the turnaround there? Can you um, can you look at say that preseason before it and? Was it yeah. better in ways, or could you? Is, is there anything now in hindsight you look back and, and think, yeah, that's these were the reasons that contributed to such a great year? Yeah, definitely. I, I think um, a bit of a, an amalgamation of, of going through what I did at the Roosters, going through sticky and learning how to be tough in the head, yeah. and to just your body's going to work if your brain just says work, you know, work. That was great, and just a couple of good. Uh, pre-season. Also, when I, when I played in 2004, when I went back to Parramatta the first year, yeah, I played not bad footy, but I got injured, so I missed. I only played 10 games, so the rest of the season off. Within that time, I had really bad like pain at the base of my tailbone. We didn't know what it was. They thought it was that osteoarthritis pubis. It ended up being something to do with my facet joints, and I honestly putting pants on. I couldn't run, and I had no bump and that. They f- eventually worked that out, and having a good pre-season 2005, and I said to Craig Fitzgibbon, I said, mate, I'm sick of not having like a goal. I'd never have a goal. I'm just turning up each day. I said, I promise you. I need to say it to someone I look up to a bit. I said, I promise you. So I'm going to have my best, best year. So fucking just put shit on me if I don't, all right? Yeah. It was like said like that over because I hate talking about that weird shit. No. And then I just, mate, I said I'd never take a shortcut in the gym. I didn't. I, I went good all year in the gym every session. Did extras, got fit, healthy. And, mate, to, to be honest, footy was easy. Yeah. When, when you're doing all that shit right, it became so easy yeah. just to play. Yeah. And the hardest part was during the week just making sure you're ticking all the boxes. Yeah. The game was easy. Like, you're fit, you're ready. You'd have a run. You were used to being in that state. You're not hung over. Like, I had mm. time off the piss and everything. Yeah. And that made a big difference. When I yeah. stopped drinking piss for about six weeks in a row, no drink. Mate, I've never played better footy, never lost more weight. Like, incredible. Just to just sidetrack it a bit to talk about the drink. When, you know when people say, I hear people say they've got no regrets. I shake my head. I've got a ton of regrets. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I say that all the time. Are you fucking saying I've that? Got a just trying to be cool. I've you got haven't sh- got fucking regrets. Yeah, I, I don't. I've got a ton of regrets. And, and even f- a th- 10 times more than that as post career. But during my career, t- talk about, and then, and at the time, that's with the alcohol. That's how it was, you know. And, you, and you, you, we don't talk about to it in belly shit, but. You know, we did everything to extremes, the way we played, the way we drank, you know, and I always look back and go, geez, I wish I didn't drink here. And, and, and you know, what, later in my career when I was in Melbourne, I was, had periods off it. And it's just, the, you look back on the footy I played in those periods, you're, you're off it. Do you look back and wish, geez, I could have prepared better yep. in this situation? And 100%. I, I knew at the time, even when I was doing it, I knew that I was going to be spewing in the yeah. future about how I'm carrying on now. I was like, this is all fun in the moment, this is all good, but this could like, you could be so much better off. Like, I'd have a better contract. I've had probably, like, media work set up because mm. you're always playing rep mm. footy because you're training better. Mate, how easy was a Monday and Tuesday if you went on the piss? Yeah, like, we play we, at Para when we were at both at Para and we're getting heaps of Friday night games. Mate, we, and we'll have – and Mick Hagen was our coach and he was just going, see you Monday, yeah. boys, or see you Tuesday, Jackie boys. Dec- Hag's making a second oh. decision, give us a start. He Mate, and, like, that was just – Disaster. Like that was a recipe for disaster for me. We talk about 05. Timmy Smith 
that was one of our mates who we played with. He, he debuts that year. He, he brains it, and, and you, your team's fantastic. It has a as a bumper year. Um, what do you remember about that season? We'll talk about the finish in a moment, but it was a pretty well balanced team. One of those, yeah. you've had a you've had a fantastic year, mate. Definitely, you, you've been in plenty of those teams yourself. When you know when you're turning up and you just know you're going to win, it was like that. It was like turning up knowing you're going to win. Um, just dominant in in every way. I, everyone was confident in the bloke next to him, and you know we didn't really talk too much shit about it. That's fine. That's good. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk too much shit about it. We just knew we were training really hard. Yeah. H had this good system going where backs were training in certain aspects, a bit more mm. like the NFL thing. Like, yeah. You know, specifically honing in on certain skill sets, and so were the forwards. And then we come together as a team, and it just had a real good vibe about it. Yeah. And mate, it was just. Everyone was happy and, and it was pouring out on the field. It's um you talk about Hayden Knowles. Um he's what's Hayden Hayden's now at Penrith and, and he's he's Freddie Fitler's uh, strength and conditioning coach for, for New South Wales. Um Hayden was at Parramatta for for a long time. He, besides Adam McDougal as a player, he was the first trainer who sort of went, Well, Guru, you, you me and you shouldn't be doing the same weights programs. Me and you shouldn't be doing the same speed programs. You know, your your speed obviously you had it, I didn't, but you know, my fitness needs to be, you know, I need a bigger motor to go all day. Yours is a repeat explosive yep. burst, you know, like or weights were different. He was the first one to sort of, you know, tailor it to the positions or body types, wasn't it? How yeah. did you enjoy your time with him? But I loved it because yeah. it, it, obviously being a winger um, on, in a, on the field compared to a forward, like the cardio stuff. So my training week went from usually having to do all the cardio with all the forwards, whatever everyone did together, to now... No, Guru, you're going to go and push cars in the car park, like a mm. hundred of them, but you're going to have a rest in between. And when you push the car, you're going to push it like you're trying to push it out of the freaking car park. Mm. And I just do that. As long as I get a rest in between, yeah. I can be as explosive, as powerful as you want. A hundred times, just give me a rest in between. Yeah. That long distance shit. Yeah. So for me and a lot of the guys, I think it really played into them enjoying their footy, turning up. And he made this thing called your toolkit. So you turn up. It wasn't a physical thing. It was what's in your toolkit for this week. What do you need to fix? So... Me being outside back, turn and chase was a big yeah. one for me. You got to practice the shit out of your turn and chase, yep. or you got to practice the shit out of your dummy half scoots, or whatever it is. You get a little list of things, tick all that off, and then do the team things, and you're done for the week. You look at your box at the end of the week, your toolbox, and there's all these green ticks, and you're like, you're carrying that into a game. You're, you're visually seeing it, and you know, I'm I'm ready to rock. Yeah. You know? I, I found I found what helped to what helps too with that, and then I found that when I come out in two thousand uh, end of two thousand six for two thousand seven season, I find when even though it might not be helping, or it might not, you, the fact that he's trying be, like to do this drill just to help you, you sort of yep. buy into it. And well, this is not just a thing; he's it's a blanket thing, or it's just, he's just he's just ticking a box for himself to say you got to do this. Yeah. He, he's looked at your, your position, or he's look, looked at your skills, or what you need to improve, or what you yep. can keep getting better at, and go. Well, I think this will help. So you sort of buy into it yeah. because you can't not like yeah. You don't, you it's see, a bit he, rude. he's putting an effort in Put for the you, time and in you, for you. you're giving it you're giving it back. Well, you walk in there, and there'll be a folder like full of uh, information and data on your like and especially when they started the heart rate, rate. One and stuff that was when I was I was done then I was yeah. like fuck this I've got two years in this and I'm out because if they're starting to know that I'm fucking bludgeoned <laughs> like I'm never going to get a job again like, I've got to start finding a new profession but mate all that all that stuff yeah you're right you do you see that and you think you've gone to all that trouble for me like as a human yeah. like I've got to fucking deliver and it, very smart very smart move from him I know I, I five was a changing of the guard in terms of the rugby league teams. Earl, start of 2000s, it was Brisbane, and, and it really was after that, sort of since the Chooks at 02, 03, 04, that, that, that It was the, the Chooks, it was the Dogs, it was the Panthers, it was the Warriors, and then 05 was a real change, and the Broncos were sort of in around there. 05 was a real changing of the guard where all those teams, you know, the, the Chooks, Dogs, Panthers, we all missed the finals. And, oh, right. Was it, and and right, you man. guys come, okay. Para come through and the Tigers come through. And more or less it was, it was the Para and the Dragons. Yes, that's right. Yep. Were the two two big, big teams. And it looked for all certain. Yeah, I thought that These two are going to the grand final. So anyway, I remember it was a, it was a Saturday night semi final. The Tigers are playing the Dragons. And the Tigers are fucking red hot favourites. And I think news were minor premiers that year, 05. So it looked like here, this is going to be the perfect old 80s grand final para, yeah. para, um, para dragons. Para get beat. Oh, sorry, dragons get yeah. beat by, um, Tigers. by Tigers. Massive upset. I'm sitting there watching thinking Para's going to win the comp. Yeah, you know, so usually playing the Cowboys the next day. 
they all smashed it. You know, you just smashed everyone. Come out next day and get beat. We got slapped. It was um. Do you remember what happened there or what? Mate, fuck, it's just one of the things. Mm. Like, I I'm not, being a winger, not in the in the guts there to know exactly what went wrong mechanically, but just whatever could go wrong went wrong. I just remember looking up and it was like maybe twelve nil, so mm. quick, and then fourteen, or oh, and then sixteen, and then just like mm. out of reach, like and. Mate, we were going for stuff. I remember Timmy Smith was putting kicks over and I'd just, I just... We always bag each other. He goes, you lost that game, bro, because I missed his first kick over. But it was so far. I went out yeah. in the third fucking yeah. row. One of my kicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we, and, mate, things like that. Like, I just nearly got to it. If I had mm. got to it and scored, like, maybe that changed Jeez. the whole day and the whole year. But I remember watching that too, thinking, fuck, we can beat yeah. them. I thought the Dragons would be tough. Yeah. And, but we can beat them. But I thought if the time was smack them. Yeah. And, mate... What happened? It was just a, it was one of those things that the huge upset of the Tigers beating the Dragons. Like, well, fuck. I remember thinking leaving that game. Well, you you guys were playing the Sunday the next day. That well, Paramount are going to win the comp. Yeah, Fermo and played in that game. Fermo did. Yeah. He got a. I think he scored a try. Yeah. Big big Fermo. He did. He's um, a photo of him. Under yeah, the sticks, a little dwarf. That. He must have been that far from the line because he can't. <laughs> his little arms. He's got a little flintlock arms. Up. Yeah. But yeah, dude, just I know. And, and you played with the um, you know a group of guys. For a long time there, Wags, you know, Daniel Wag and Luke Burt, Nath Kalis, Hindy, you know, there's a lot of guys there. Johnny Morris played for a few years. Do you ever talk about that? Or does that ever reflect that fuck we probably missed an opportunity there? Oh, man, I'm sure we were one day, but yeah. I haven't really, I haven't plugged back in. I'm looking forward to COVID pissing off so we can have them reunion things because I missed the last one. I couldn't yeah. go to the last one to go to Foster to see Mum. And I really want to go and just catch up with everyone because I haven't seen them for a few years yeah. now, and, and you know I still. Well, do you ever do you few. even look back yourself like just because like you know someone like me who's a footy nerd like I replay things over. Oh, 100 Do you look back yeah. and fucking yeah? Well, because I, I remember looking at that going, Jesus, missed an opportunity, and that wasn't even I wasn't even in the that team. That game, obviously, the GF where you guys done us, yep. um, and also the Origin 06 yeah. where we were winning with a minute thirty to go, and that happened in front of my oh. eyeballs. I played the ball, I think. Yeah. yeah. I just threw that pass, the kick through from Lock. Lockie, you're just out of nowhere. All the time. I, that, I've never been so like high from thinking of one of fucking origin and never had that saying, it's not over to the fat lady since mm. put in my face like this in my life. And right in front of me, it was just like someone just grabbing mm. your heart. Because that was like a game, you grow up watching origin, it's passionate. Yeah. And like, I'm known for not giving a fuck in that, but you do. You give a fuck. Yeah. You used to always say to me, you used to always say, say, you give do. a fuck. Yeah. More than anyone. You go, mate, you run too hard yeah. to give a, that's, not give a fuck. That's why I used to always. <laughs> well, I used to be running out of fear. Yeah. Of fuck. I want them to be scared of me because I'm scared of them, yeah. you know. Mate, uh, poor old Hodjo threw the pass out. Don't worry, Hodjo, New South Wales didn't win for another 12 years after <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, fuck. But, uh, mate, you, you get to the end of the year, you win the Dallingham. Uh, I won the halfback. Uh, in 2004, Dalian halfback of the year. And, you that's know, right. obviously... Bring him up. Yeah, I just want to throw, my, throw that <laughs> I won one as well. But that that's... The fact that you're consistently seen as the best winger. It, and, you know, there's only one halfback in each team. Yep. There's two wingers in, in each team, you know, like... Yep. And you're the best for that. Yeah, that's a that's a fair achievement, something you, you should be proud of. Yeah, definitely, mate. I, I, um, I was very humbled by it because I... Like being someone who probably didn't take it as serious as a lot of other professional athletes yeah. were taking it, and to do it for a like really go, hang on, fucking, you got a good opportunity and rip in for a year, and to see that reward for that hard work, yeah. it was like, ah, oh, that's how life works. If you do that, you'll get little things like this, and and like I said, that the easy part becomes playing. That's the easy part if you do all the other shit. So yeah, it was a very, it was very humbling, and I was like, oh, Dalian, like it's a big thing that's been around since my yeah. dad was playing, you know. So I was, I was, that's my kind of. Greatest achievement, I mm. should probably guess. So. Well, there's, an, there's another achievement that comes back there. You make the Australian team. Yeah, that was great. Um, now, there's a couple of things here. Like, the first half, how proud of you was to do that. And I, and I say, you talk about, I know, I used to we take the piss and me and you play it down a bit. I, I used to be smoking mirrors a lot with, with me drinking, you know. I'd be right away at Christmas and the boys would say, oh, you've done any training? I'd say, no, nah, I've been on the drink the whole time where I've been training harder yeah. than anyone. And I'd turn up and flog it. they go, how good's this yeah, bloke? He yeah, doesn't do machine, anything. Yeah. I'd been doing everything. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, say, you used to say, you know, you don't care. And I'd always say to you, mate, you do care. No one runs hard <laughs> like you if you don't care, you know. And, yeah. and well, no, we, we, we yeah. were a bit like similar to each other. We would be talking shit and sarcastic, but we'll, you know, we'll pull up. You could, I could see like we did, there was a lot of care and meaning behind yeah. it. You play for Australia and – Become the eighth father and son combination to play for Australia. So okay. it's a twofold question here. 
because you think how hard it is just to make Australia, but to be, you know, a father son combo. How proud would you were to make that as as an individual? But then when you think about that, you're now achieving something. You and your dad have achieved something that, you yeah. know, you think of not only how many players have played rugby league, yeah. like thousands and thousands and thousands. Yep. You two have now father and son have played. Yeah, represent well, the highest honour, which is possible. Definitely, mate. I, when you say it like that, it definitely makes it feel very special. But I, um, I, I have thought about that, but not a, not a, uh, not deeply like I am right now. It's very special. But I remember it was very strange too because when I played for Australia, um, it was in France, it was in Perpignan, and it was like there was literally like maybe three hundred people in mm. the. Oh, I don't know how many. Maybe there was a mm. thousand. I don't know. It looked like there was no one there. Very quiet. Mm. Very cold. No stadium atmosphere. Yeah. There was like so. It was very strange to be wearing like what's such a prestigious jersey yeah. in such a. It felt like we we're playing in an A grade yeah. place, you know. No disrespect to them, like it was unreal. Yeah. And we we were a bit worried because apparently the year before maybe Aussies had turned up thinking hungover and thinking oh it's a, easy we'll run through them and they they were scary for a while. There was like eighteen all for a while. Yeah. There was something. So I was like, fuck that, man. I'm not being in an Australian team that loses to the Frogs like yeah. when you're taking it too lightly. So fuck my first couple of runs, mate. I've never run harder in my life. It, and, and it just opened up and, and I flicked the ball and Mini scored and it was just on. They scored about – I didn't score, but the boys just scored 50 points that quick. I don't know, I don't know what the fuck the score was, but we flogged them. It's funny you say that because I went down to Barrel on the weekend uh, on Saturday just going with – Strewy Webb was there and, and yeah. Webby was his good mate with the Anderson family. Yeah, they were yeah. down there and Opes was down there. And Abus was coach of that team when they played the Frogs. Oh, and they okay. just won. He was a strain coach. And I was talking about it. And we're talking about how that, that was the tour they weren't they thought they were never going to win anything. And they was that 04, was 03, it? 03, that 03. was. 03, okay, yeah, yeah. And anyway, he'd been he, the people from French Rugby League spoke to Opes and said, mate, listen, we're trying to build it here. You can't come in and what? flog uh, the shit really? out of us. Yeah. So what Opes did, Opes let them get, you know, they might be playing Saturday. Opes Got the boys on the drink Thursday oh, and then flogged them Friday. The boys come, what's it like? Oh, and he's going back to them and said, listen, they've been on the piss two days ago. I'm going to be flogged for two days. That's the, the best yeah, I can yeah. do. And the boys come out flat as hell. Oh, and Opes was saying, he was starting to think, shit, have I gone too hard here? Yeah. We, we don't want to get – you want to win, but you don't want to – you, you, they don't want us to flog them uh, for the benefit of the game. Fuck, it was nice of him, wasn't it? Um, but uh, look who's just walked in, Tim, Timmy Manor. Oh, oh, no way. Oh, the nicest man in rugby league. <laughs> nah, um, he's got a streak in him. Yeah, yeah mate, you know the funny thing about Timmy while he's here? Um, Let's talk trips away. Well, we'll think, it was in the start of uh, 09 and I was living at Woolloomooloo in the Finger Wharf. And remember, we had, a, we had a few beers the night before and we had Kate Waterhouse's birthday out in the big boat out on the harbour. And we trained out there, and of course, I, I got a taxi all the way out there because I'd been drinking the night before. I didn't know how I was going to get back in. And Timmy goes, you all drop me off. I don't live far from there. So he drives me all the way back. He's like 18. I said, well, do you live in the city? He goes, no, no, I live back. There. It was 25 days back there. Oh, no, what a I legend, said, mate, mate. You, you said you live close. He goes, yeah, it's only 25 minutes. So I said, mate, you've driven an hour around here, right? Yeah. Mate, um, what about, um, oh, mate, Texas, um, Vegas, where else have we been? Everywhere. Everywhere. Texas a few times. Well, my first year, I was um, I was only a kid. It was my first preseason. And I think it was me, Chris Keating, Trent Hodkins. There was a few of us. It was our first mm. preseason, and um, it was like my first or second week of training. We used to get every Thursday off, mm. and Finchy sat a few down, and I was I was a nerd. I was a kid. I was you know still learning the ropes. And Finchy goes, "Boys, when you have that day off, just get away from footy. Don't even think about it. Don't have anything to do with it." It was me personally. I'll go to Stilettos. But yeah, you're like, you know, I'm like, you know, what, what's that? That was my day off all my, all my pre-game. <laughs> that was all. Awesome. That was the... You uh, come to train and smell them beautiful. Oh, anyway. come back out at 40, 48 showers. Um, but yeah, mate, it, it, it was uh, it's good to see you, Timmy. Thanks for... Fo- oh, my viewers have just dropped a thousand percent. But, <laughs> Bullshit, it went that, up uh, It went up all the, all the, all the likes, but... Yeah, well, it's good, good enough to finally get some bloke in here who's honest now. See, see, <laughs> so, Timmy's the most honest bloke in the game. But, um, yeah, back to that stra- Australian team and you won, but that must have been, you know, do you look back now to play for, to play for Australia? Like, I never got to play for Australia. Like, it's a, you played in the, you played in the... I, I play in the P in the Prime Minister's That's Australia. Australia. That's Australia. Well, well, not everyone's available. I tell everyone who's never, not, mate, all still, my mates in Melbourne who don't really know, I tell them I play. But, but that's a, that's a huge honour, that, mate, to... Yeah, yeah, you played New South Wales, and you played New South Wales next year, but to play for Australia, 
Yeah, it was. I remember um, I stood next to Marco Mealy when the anthem was being played, and you know how passionate he is, so I was feeding off that a little bit, and I just I got a bit teary because I thought, because I was in France, but my mum and dad had to work, they weren't there. There was no one I knew there, and I was thinking of my pop who would love to have been there, he's too hard to travel and that at the time when he was alive, and I got a bit like, oh, far out. I didn't usually get that about footy, but that really, yeah, and after obviously having a good year and all that hard work and it made it all that more emotional, like you, you've deserved something, you know, like good on you, mate, you've done this, finally you've grown up a little bit and you've you pulled your finger out and had a crack, you know. Mate, just quickly, um, just remind me with, with Timmy, when I looked over there, I remember talking to Timmy, I'd retired the first year 2014 and, and the power, you boys are playing um, Penrith out at Penrith Stadium and I'm the reserve grade, uh, sorry, I'm the sideline commentator. So I'm coming into the game for Channel 9 and I see Timmy, I'm talking to Tim, how you going, mate, what's going on? He goes, man, I'm getting married this weekend. Like this was a Friday night game. I was like, oh, great stuff, you know. Mm. I have good, and back then I was single and I was the ultimate, um, oh, what would you think for that? Was, yeah, I was, I was apparently just starting to see someone. But, you know, I had the old single boy attitude and uh, Parra were getting beat about 20 to 6 and there wasn't much to go on. Timmy was coming back on for his last stint and he walks past me and I think, they go, Fitch, have you got anything to say? I said, yeah, throw me down. I want to mention something about Timmy. So they thought I was going to say something about his game or whatever. I said, yeah, boys, as uh, Skipper Tim Menner prepares to come back on. Um, actually, some news, he's getting married this weekend. So unfortunately, his weekend goes from bad to worse. <laughs> 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 and the crowd and, and like the, the, all the uh, producers and that were like, what are you doing? What are you said, doing? And Mabes goes, oh, thanks for that, Brett. We just, we just lost enti- our entire female audience. <laughs> uh, so, mate, back to that too. How, how was that? It would have been fun going away. You mentioned Minnie. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of good fun guys in that yeah. group that went away. Yeah, there was, mate. It, if, I feel like that was the last of the... The debauchery yeah, tours. Yeah, it went pretty locked down after that start, after all that year. But I remember, like, <laughs> being in France and just the partying. Mate, it was just a con- – for me, it was a contingent tour. I only played one game. I didn't get picked again. Like, I nearly got picked once because I think Brent Tate was injured in one game or whatever. But, mate, I was basically – Wayne Bennett came up to uh, Andrew Ryan, uh, Benny Cray and myself because we weren't – we were at the Emus. We weren't playing. That weekend, we hadn't been picked. He goes, boys, why don't you just piss off to Spain for a few days? And I'm like – at the end of training, going, we don't, we don't have to hang around. Like, he's in there training the next few days. He goes, boys, he's right overseas. Go see the world, mate. He goes, there's this great little um, island. He's new <laughs> stuck on island. He's going, it's warmer over there. There's some young shields there too. You know, boys can chase them. And uh, I'm going, ended up, we ended up not being able to go anywhere except for Ireland. So we went to Ireland and had three days over in Dublin. And it was fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Like the best fun. Three days of just full on drinking and piss and having the best time. Then back straight into a Billy Johnson. Um, Fitness Thank session you. for the injured players, mate. So, mate, I remember I went to Ireland um, in the end of 2011. I was playing at Wigan, and, and Will Chambers had a six month stint in Munster, which is up in Limerick. Oh, yeah. Now, Limerick's known as Stab City. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, I, a- go, I go over there to um to have Christmas and New Year's with him because he was on his own. Anyway, so we get to the um this pub here where we're at, and you know how big like, the Irish were fantastic. I, I loved Ireland, just the Irish how people. Friendly and culture, is yeah. the culture and, the and then anyway, um, I remember drinking the, the band. They had the old folk fiddle band or whatever. Yeah. And I, there's this bloke. He had they had a member of the band was had to get beers. He, there was an actual member who was his job was just to, to run, the beers, beers. run the beers. Run the beers, yeah. Mate, And I ended up getting that blind. <laughs> I was sort of inside and there was a window, but the window was up, you know. And I thought it was when I went to lean on the window. <laughs> and fell straight out the window. Hey, like, there's another think, good story about that. Fell Someone straight falling out the like that. <laughs> and, and all they did was pick me up and, you know, I've knocked over everything and I'm thinking, I'm going to get kicked out. They picked me up and gave me another <laughs> yeah. beer and said, keep going. Mate, so it's different, was eh? <laughs> Wasn't it? It's real yeah, jovial and they're yeah. all like, pat- even the, the big fellas, though, there's no ego. They're all patting you in the back, like feeding you piss and... Uh, good times, mate. I'll get back over there for sure. Well, after that Australian until, uh, tour in 05, 06, you make New South Wales. And again, um, you know, it's a father-son combination, which is a huge achievement for, for the family. But making New South Wales, how was that? How was you? Yeah, that was good. Because um, considering that you'd made it in yeah. 2000, an injury prevented that. And now, you know, five or six years later, you've, you've got back. Yeah. No, it was good because, yeah, it felt like, oh, okay, you get a second shot of it. Not a lot of people do. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to play my best. I felt like I made some stupid mistakes, yeah. but I also, um, you say the day for one of them. Yeah. Um, and just said, yeah, just wanted to really prove that I could do it in that big stage. And because a lot of people had said, 
pulled out because I was scared. No, my injury was rubbish. fake and shit. Well, mate, everyone's you're, scared. You're, 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 you're injury fake. You missed out the next year and a half of yeah, footing. I don't know. I don't know, but that you one, dragged that on pretty well. Don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. You held that story on. Well. That. That's a great lie you kept going. Like, that's I'm the same with me. Lies to me. Missus got a drag <laughs> on for five years. I, um, yeah, man. And so I just when I got picked, I made it a point to have a real good series. Yep. And, mate, like I said, so fucking close. So close to winning an Origin Series. Mm. But then from then, that was the first of however many in a row they won. Yeah. After that. Talk about that first game and, and you're famous. Now, we had, a, we had a great game that where we led 16 nil. Queensland come back. Where we winning by 16? And I remember uh, put a kick across. Kingy got it. And it, and it went to – he would have scored as he dived across the line. Would have made it 22-16. It would, would have been all over. And GI come across and knocked it out. And then oh, made, yeah. Uh, and then I kicked the field goal, obviously, to win the game. But that in there, that you have a fight with Hodger. Now, you and Hodger lived together. Yeah. We'll remember but I remember so. a good backstory you told him about why you started the fight and it's a screen yeah. to that. Oh, and he, he um, uh, what he used to it? always push yeah. himself. Yeah, I lived with him for a bit. He was living with Rico and he was a bit younger and Rico kind of had a girl at the time and it was getting serious. That's, that's surprising, Rico. Yeah, something girl. different. And then um, I, I saw that it was probably, um, no, Rico didn't say anything, but I just thought, oh, he's younger, I'll get him in with me. Because I'm still fucking 22, yeah. 23, whatever. Instead of living with a 28-year-old, whatever. Moved his shit in, just took over yeah. and then... <laughs> I was just to say, I used to see him every week. He'd be like threatening to punch someone. I'd say, "Fucking do that to me! I'm punching you, can't. If I ever play, sorry, if yeah. I ever play against you and you do that, I got to punch out. I'm not fucking. He'd always I'm not being on the end of that and not reacting. Yeah. Like, so sure enough, exactly what I talked about to all my mates. I'm playing Origin, and I just remember him going. Oh, I'm thinking, I've just told everyone <laughs> like, for I'll, the last four years for the, for the month. Yeah, for as long as I've seen him do that, that if he does it to me, I'm punching him. I can't not. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even. It was just more of a like, go away, like. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish I wound up and yeah. not be, it would have looked good not for highlights. But, but, mate, it was just nothing. And the best part about it was after the game, I thought, oh, he's going to think I'm a fuck with you know, and that. And he goes, I saw him on TV getting interviewed about it. He goes, oh, who cares? It's just footy. He goes, mate, me and Guru are roomies. Yeah. And I was like, what a champion. Yeah. And so it should be. Plus the yeah. fact they thought if he's going to fight you again, you'd knock his box. Oh, so. fuck, I don't know about that. Either. Mate, that, that year it's um, – and you're right, we, we get towed. And I always tell him. Uh, my story I've told a thousand times. I was on the piss for three days. I got pulled out of the pub to play that next day. Yeah, that was I was on a three day band. I played the best footy ever. Game two, I got off the piss for two weeks, had an absolute shocker, and never played again. Then those three, they, they, a few of us got it dropped, and, and Gowie comes in, Gaz comes in. And like you said, it was um, the ha- pass from Hodge. We're, we're home and hosed, and the, the pass with a minute to go. What was it like as a player? Obviously, we were part of the squad down there, but you'd. I mean, you're not. A, it's not like a club footy. So you're disappointed, but you're not in there for us. Yeah, How yeah, was yeah. it to play in that? Yeah, that was a, that was probably that in the grand final, and uh, yeah, that in the grand final were probably the two games that uh, I've really emotion. Like when I see it, I get them feelings again. Um, it came on somewhere. I was uh, the 2009 GF, um, and actually, sorry, no, the end of the the end. I caught the end of the Origin, and I, I saw all that play, and I just. It was like I fucking it just happened like ten minutes ago, and I remember the camera span across and it's just on all of us sitting there. And I remember that moment. I remember being so like sad, yeah. like off, like this is this is what must like blokes like you so you must feel that every week if mm. you lose like a few in a row. You know, yeah. I was like fucking. I, I feel like that's that's scarred me. Yeah. Like now I'm the first of the fucking shit cake. Origin teams Jeez, that didn't yeah. beat fucking for however many years they won in a row. Fuck. And we were going for four in a row. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. right yeah, um, and we go back to club footy. Para, uh, para don't start the year well, but uh, yeah, no, what year was this? Oh six, and then I think JT takes over. Jason Taylor takes over from Smithy at the end, and uh, the team goes on a bit of a run. And you do make the semis, get knocked out by Melbourne in the first week. But that's right. That's certainly built, you know, for a good season the next year for oh seven when when Hague's come in. Yeah, definitely. It was very weird because at the end of Smithy era, like Smithy, what he done for that club, mate? Like. He, he basically went, took it from uh, an A-grade thing to a, a NFL-style thing. You know, yeah. it was that calculated, and it was genius. Some of the stuff he used to come up with, mate, it, it would blow anyone's football brain away, and certainly mine. Um, but then, uh, yeah, what happened was when it, during the Origin, is the coach he left or something? Piggy turned up to train, or some altercation or whatever, or Pig was hung or something, and that was it. Smithy left, and then uh, Jason Taylor. Took over, so I'm in camp while all this is happening. So I, I leave while Smithy's coach come back to JT coach after that crazy Origin period, 
And, um, mate, he pretty much took over where uh, Smithy locked off. There was a little bit of pressure gone because Smithy was feeling pressure, so we were feeling that pressure. Yeah. That was kind of gone, so we are kind of enjoying our footy again. And then, obviously, Hags had been signed already, so it was too late to go back on that, and that was shit for um, JT. And it was very disruptive. But then when Hagen got there, it was like, finally, we can fucking just Press chill, man. Air. We know what's going on. And he was cool. You know what he's like. He's mm. one of the best blokes you ever meet and loves the boys having a good time yeah. and wants us to enjoy our footy. And that was great for the first year. But blokes like me take advantage yeah. of that shit. And I turn up fucking 40 kilos overweight. And we, we have the worst year ever the following year. The fact that... that I never got coached by Smithy, but I the play, the coaches I always reacted best to was someone like a Hay, Mick Hagan, Billy A. You know, the, the, Smithy, you know, had, talking to him, he's like you said, super smart. But whatever times do you think, well, you try to outsmart yourself, or it gets more like a dictatorship sort of thing, or is it? Yep. Because it's because you've seen the you know the whole joint sort of reacted differently. It's, it's, it was such probably. A, you know, it's such a different change of styles when Michael Hagen come in. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, people say, oh, this coach was shit. And then he would, like, you get, it seems to play out that it's all there in the right time for where it ends up. You know what I mean? Like, we needed Hagen, who was the opposite of Smithy, because we had Smithy for so long and it was so full on, and which is awesome in a lot of ways. When he goes to a new club, it changes the whole mm. club. They play and jumping out of skin for each other. After a little while, it can get a bit stale if it's that full on all the time. Being blue collar sport, you start going, fuck, you get text messages of a night time. Like, fucking, this is too arrest. much, you know what I mean? Like, so then we got Hagen, which was the opposite of that, which was great initially. We, uh, the, the oh, relaxed. Just, then that turned into bad. So yeah. we needed him to go and Daniel Anderson to come in and we all know what Big Red's like yeah. after a fucking Red Bull. Yeah. Way over the fucking <laughs> video. The, um, <laughs> we talk of, uh, talk of H, I was just speaking about it. I remember... You know, a few of the younger boys, Hainsey and, and um, Inu, Christian Inu, super talented, but, you know, they were a bit laid back, if that's the yep. technical term. And I remember, um, uh, I could have been Hindy or, or Nath Carlos come and said, hey, mate, you've got to talk to it's either Hainsey or Jared, uh, Christian Inu about, you know, just they've got to be on point a bit more, a bit more intense or whatever. And, and Hanks was like, mate, what, what are you doing? You're the captain yeah. coach. You know, so they'd come from that where Smithy had controlled it. You yeah. know, that's a different... So I was like, Smithy had controlled it where Hags had come from Newcastle where yep. he just sets the environment and, 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 and Joey Work and or Ben yourself, Kennedy yeah. and Steve Simpson. Yeah, so right. it was that different change. Maturity. Neither neither was right or wrong. It was just a different thing. And, yeah. and you're right, that, that, that 07 season, we, we sort of went, oh, I, I remember I come to the club to play 5-8. Early in the year, we weren't great. We were a bit up and down. Yeah. But then by about mid-year, we, we, we really come good and, and, and finish, yeah. you know, back into the season was a lot of fun. And now, Where did like, we get to? We, we, we finished fifth and we, oh. we had to go over to New Zealand. We beat New Zealand first week of the semis, beat Canterbury second week, and, and Melbourne beat us the, the one before the grand final. But I remember that our right edge, which is me, you, and, and Benny Smith. And if you're defending on an edge with me as a halfback, it's not fun because I'd kick the ball downfield. I'd be screaming at you to chase it. Now, when we get down there to defend, I'd jump on the wing and make push you in to def- yeah. defend where I'm supposed to. And then when I was nearly last tackle for you, I'd put you back out the wing and say, go back and get the, the <laughs> kick. But um, that was – I thought that was a really good team. It was a good parlance team. Timmy Smith had a great year. We had Piggy. Yeah. Then we had senior players like Wags, uh, the High Marsh brothers, yep. um, Nath Kalis. Yep. Um, and, and it was an enjoyable time around. I can – and Tamana Tove. Oh, when he, he, he was, was on fire. Because he was going year. to the union the next year and his back end of the year was, was electric. Trying to kill people. Yeah. And it was just some of the sound of the crunches of the bodies colliding when he'd line someone yeah. up. That You know when the voice and the wind get yeah. like, yeah. like just breaking blokes' will. Oh, it was just, yeah, it was awesome to be in and be that close to. Yeah, and, and we've seen a few few young blokes come through like Hainsey who debuted the year before, but he, he was outstanding. Folletti, Mateo off oh. the bench and he knew like... yeah. Hey, Andrew John said to me about Felitti Mateo, he said if he if he was as interested as say like a bloke like yourself with his with his yeah. frame and his basketball style of offloading and stuff, he, he said he'd be the best player in the world. Yeah. He he and, and he knew it was it was crazy too. We get beat by on Melbourne in, in the semi down there at Eddie Had Stadium or the, the old Telstra Dome or whatever it's called now. But that sets us up. We go into the next year, oh eight as as uh Favourites to win the comp. Yeah. And our trial form is off the charts. Yeah. It, was, it was electric. Right. And then then it all just falls apart, doesn't it? We had, we had a real oh. bludger of a year. Oh, mate. I remember 
I just bought a house and it was just all going downhill. Like the bloke who I bought the house, who got to build the house just done a number on me. I was that in debt, that stressed. Like footy was the furthest thing in my brain, and it just started showing. Like I was rattled, and some of the some of the good laughs we've had. What was that song? Um, what? When I'm after a game just or something, I lost a game line. for the whole team or something, and I, and I said, boys. I'm fucking so sorry. And later out, we're out that night, got drinking our sorrows. And I said, I'm so sorry, mate. And that song came on. It's too late to apologize. <laughs> but, mate, I'm, I remember we uh, played someone and, and we were all going shit house. But Haig said to you, I'm going to put you back to reserve grade. Go get some confidence. You went, no, mate. Thanks. I'm really doing this. And then the next week, we didn't play well again. And then you like... walked in and went, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that next game was up in the Broncos. <laughs> And but, there was one second ago and Lockie's put a kick in behind me and uh, Denim Kemp Denim Kemp okay. fucking scooted inside yeah. me and scored to win the game after I'd begged him not to put me in reserve. I walked straight and said, I'll be at ring yeah. on fucking I, I remember <laughs> we, we went out for a drink and you know how you, you don't talk um, I'm fucking hopeless like this. I say things that everyone else is thinking. <laughs> we go out in the piss and everyone's upset not wanting to say anything. I said, Goo, you know when Lockie kicked it behind you, you remind me one of those, you know those men at the end of the ground that have got the air in them? I said, you kicked it around, you were just trying to stop lock the thing like that. Stop and yeah. stare. That's oh. right, we'll sing all the songs that had to do with me fucking. Lockie's me. kicked and you're not moving anywhere. But you, be, mate, you were great on, on the field. I remember um, the, the silver chair song. Uh, yeah. Straight lines, and you'd be going kick chasing in a straight line. <laughs> I tried to put everything into a song. Yeah, so or Huey it. Lewis, yeah, it's hip to be square. Hip and you to say, because yeah. Hayes used to always say your hips have to be square. And when you, yeah, and, and you'd be and you'd be on Rock the field. Huey Lewis hips, yep, got and it. you'd be on the field yelling out, "A hips will be," and you're trying to tackle like an you laughing. <laughs> Mate, what about when you win and you got like twenty points up, where mm. there's only five minutes to go, wherever, and Benny Smith had just start looking. Oh, well, you just yes. get all excited. Where are we going? Especially like, Friday, Friday night. Friday night, we got like executive decision till Monday off. We just, oh, the well, best be, feeling ever. And there'd be a couple of blokes who knew who could push Hags' buttons. Obviously, I was the number one because I'd known Hags since yeah. I was a kid. But there was me, you, Piggy. He loves that sort of. Yeah. Like he loved everyone. He loves but the we'll, piss take stuff. Yeah. He loves them rat bags. And you'd get in. You could, I'd just start whispering to a trainer, let's get an ED, which was an executive decision <laughs> to get a Monday off from Hags. Yeah. Or an Arvo session. Or an Arvo session. And you'd it'll just start coming. You wanted to get up the F3 anyway. Exactly. And then you'd get your E, D, E. And you just, that's Hags would just love to build it. <laughs> and then you'd go, right, out, executive decision, no yeah, training. And everyone would just off. go, you beauty. What about when he'd call us over and go, boys, right, we can do another 20 minutes here, ball work, or we can come back to Sarvo, mate. Let's go. And that's Let's it. That. Finished on a Friday by midday. He's up the F3, yeah. beats the traffic. We're all home having the best time. And that last 20 minutes is the best training ever. <laughs> oh, isn't it? it? <laughs> mate, we, we jump ahead, uh, 08. Uh, doesn't finish great for, for the team, but end of I'll talk about. I'll, I'll come back to the, the trip away then the year after. I'll go on to '09. Uh, again, we don't start great. I leave. Uh, the team st- struggles a bit early, but then fine catches fire. Um, I'll talk about Haynes in a minute because obviously Haynes's individual performance was outstanding. But take away Haynes from that. The whole team was fantastic. You played out of your skin for that, that year. Uh, Daniel Mortimer was terrific. Jeff Robson was terrific. The, uh, Toddy Lowry was terrific. You know, Hindy and Nate Kalis and the rest of the boys, Matty Keating. The team just fit, caught fire. Run, yeah. run us through what you remember of that because at one stage, you needed to win 12 of 13 games to make the semis and you just did that. Yeah, I remember it was do or die a couple of games there. I remember um, Daniel Anderson saying, boys, look, this is it. Like, we can overthink it. We go out there and you just know how to play football. Just go for it. Like, play what's in front of you. Play some footy. Let's try it. We played Melbourne, I think, or the Dogs it was. That, either one one and two they were. And we smacked them. We beat them. G.I., I, I caught G.I., I clipped him across the head accidentally and it must have it made him a bit dizzy and he'd gone off for the whole game. So, G.I. was out of the equation. <laughs> And we, yeah, thank God. And we just kept scoring. And, and next it's a Monday we, night game. Like that. Yeah, yeah. And next minute we beat Melbourne. And then we had the Dogs. We'll go and come and last. We'll nearly last. We had the Dogs the following week. So we just beat rolled Melbourne and Dogs. And we just went, oh, no worries. And then Hainsey basically just turned the switch, and yeah, it was all over. It was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, it, it was chip over the tops, and he was untouchable. Well, talk about talk untouchable. talk to me about him. I remember, you know, I just with my situation, I, I'd lost a bit of. Bit of desire, bit of burn, you know, bit of that fire, which 
you know, I couldn't afford to. I, my whole goal was being competitive in that, the whole game. Yeah. And I'd lost, you know. Was, was, we were going out heaps, man. Well, you know what? That, that was the first time I – Too run, much, man. On a Monday, I run, called in sick when I was hungover. And I called him and said I was sick, and I'd never done, never that, done that. And man. I'd lived off being the hardest trainer hungover, yeah. you know what I mean? I woke up in your car once for yeah, boxing. Yeah, and went out there. And I, I was your boxing partner, yeah. and just it was just fumes coming off of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was training your heaps hard too. I was holding them out like that, and you just going, oh. like paper mache, just falling. <laughs> uh, and anyway, it's, and I remember my, and, and I said to the end, I, I was four games into a four, three year deal, I, just, I wanted to release. But I remember it, we never had any bobs, so it was best to move on. We're quite amical with the whole thing, but we had a lot of one on ones because I was a halfback and then and as a coach. And I remember you coming to me and goes, Do you see Endo stares at your head when you talk to him? <laughs> so Endo, stares at your hairline. Stares at your hairline, not, not your eyes, stares at your hairline. And I remember <laughs> after one of the games, we're down the field and Endo goes, Finchie. And we, we got beat and I played shit house. And he pulls me away from the group and all the groups sort of standing watching and he, and he fucking hammers me. <laughs> You come back over and you go, well, uh, is everything all right? What did he say? I said, no, he's pretty happy with me, but fuck, he's not happy with how my hair's playing. He's filthy with how's my hair's playing. He just gave you hairline extras for all week. But how was the end? He, he's a different cat to Hags again. Yeah, yeah. But again, you look at his career, he's had so much, he had super success at the Warriors. Yep. And during that time, he turned around a team that looks like was going to come last to yep. win on one of the greatest runs any team's been on in, in the history of the game. Yeah, definitely. And um, timing again, like we were talking about before, he came after a bit of a relaxed kind of coach atmosphere with Hags. We needed another Smithy type of analytical, shut the fuck up, do your shit, and, and you know, enforce, a bit of an enforcer. And that's what he was. And, you know, he's probably, Endo, not the best people person because he's just blunt. Yeah. But I love that about him. I've known him since I, I went to school, <laughs> yeah, high school, and he was a teacher there and that. And, he's and you found great footy. form again under him, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and he said to me, he goes, Eckhart, you know me, I know you. He goes, I don't need to bullshit you. Fucking train hard. Yeah. He, he goes, he said to me before, the best thing he ever did, he said, because I had the shit, he, I waited, he goes, you're not playing reserve grade, you're playing first grade, so make sure you're fucking ready because yeah. you're going to look like a fuckwit if you're not. Yeah. And it was unreal. I was like, fucking thanks, mate. All right, no don't, worries. You didn't have, have to, to worry yourself. Mm. I know I'm in. All right, don't let him down. And we, even, like, it didn't, we didn't start the year great even yeah. that year, but um, got better and better, and we needed him at that time. Yeah. I, I haven't spoken to him for a while, but I, I got on yeah. all my coaches, even anyone who thought that I had it, like Sticky hated me as a footballer, but he likes me as a bloke. Right, yeah. I'll speak to him now, have a good chat, have a yeah. laugh and that. I love all the coaches yeah. I had. I fucking think it was one of the best careers. Yeah, a very good career. I had. Mate, I remember, so he's mate, the, uh, the grand final. We go to a great run at the end of the year. Actually, talk to me before we get to the finals. Two, so it's round two. There's two games to go. You beat whoever you beat in the second last game, so you're in the finals. You're going to finish eighth. You can't finish higher. You're going to finish eighth. The last game you play is uh, the Dragons, the last regular season game yep. at Cogra. Now, no matter what the result is, you're going to play them the following week in the first week of the grand, uh, first week of the semis. And the Dragons were minor premiers. So used to be old McIntyre system, one verse eight. Now, is it true I've heard... Along, you go out, you get fogged 36 6 or something. I was cooked. I had a uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Like yeah. I missed the whole. I was but cooked for three days. Was it true? I'm not too sure if you remember. It was a bit like, oh, the bubbles burst, you know, like this. Is, but was it true? You had no game plan? Because he, cause you, you, Ando knew you were going to play the next week. Wrong, Can't remember that. I'm the wrong bloke to yeah, ask. Because right, right, you come out the next week, the first week of the semis. Yeah. And you just beat, yeah. you beat the Dragons. You know, they'll first use rate and then and at, yeah. on their home ground. Well, I remember. Because you took the intercept to start the game that went the length. Yeah. That, yeah, that was in the second half. That, yeah. that kind of made us make them have to score two mm. convert a trial or whatever. So that kind of gave us a bit of breathing space. But that before that game, I remember I still, because I had the crook bug where you yeah. spew on and everything else, I, was, I still felt weak in that. I remember before the game, it was pretty hot too. I remember Endo going around the room just panicking because they'd smacked us the week before. Heine didn't play either, so mm. me and Heine were back in the team. He's just going around the room telling everyone their jobs and he gets to me and he goes, I'll go, what, what else am I going to fucking do? What are you going to say now? And everyone just started laughing. I go, I'll chip over the top. Go, you run that fucking ball very hard. Yes, I'll run the ball hard for you, mate. And we fucking just yeah. brained them. We, yeah. just, we just went out a different team. I think when you smack a team the week before, you can get in that lackadaisy yeah. state, you know, rest on your laurels a bit. Oh, yeah. That's what they smoke do. Em, yeah. That's what they do. Well, he's went on running, you pump the um, pump the Titans the next week. 
following week, the prelim, you just play the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. I high fived Hulk Hogan's hand on the way out to mm. that Titans game. He was he was standing in the middle of the field doing some promotion mm. thing. We ran out the Titans semi. Hulk's and stuff. he had his big bit out. It's about that big. And I slapped it, and it was the best contact. <laughs> and it was like stinging as running at my finger. But he would have thought catching the ball with yeah, one yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so but mate, you just play the dogs. And obviously, there's some great rivalries, but in terms of clubs, Bulldogs and Parramatta are two of the greatest rivalries. He's dominant from the, the 80s, obviously. You play that at at, um, at home, but should, mate, there's 60 odd thousand there. Yep, that like, was a big one. That felt like a, for a grand, grand final. final. Yeah. How, how was that to play in and, and you just win? Not, not only I talk about the winning feeling, but you're now in a grand final where 10 weeks ago, you blokes were two points off last. Yeah. Now you're. You've gone, you've lost one game in 14, yeah. 15 weeks and you're going to play in the grand final in, in front of – after a game which was yeah, – you was beat our rivals and a huge crowd. I, I didn't realise how big that game was until a couple of days later because I, I think I must have got clipped in the head and got a bit – because I, I don't remember the game. I remember after the game and the elation that we're in the grand final, I remember cuddling Squincy yeah. and, and there's a photo of it that helps me remember, but I don't, I don't have a recollection of that fucking game. But I remember – Seeing the paper and that and the fucking how big the moment was and because it was power versus the dogs after all the history and we were in the GF, we beat him. It was like and I was living with Daniel Holsworth at the time yeah. and he, he was, was playing. Bulldogs, yeah, right? I was living with him. So he was the bulldog. So he was on his mad Monday and I stayed away for a few days to stay out of the madness while we had the next game and yeah. that. So that was a crazy time. Yeah, yeah, mate. You talk about the next week. We obviously play. That's the Friday night. We play the Saturday night against Brisbane down in Melbourne. Um. You know, smoke those GI scores three tries. I think we win forty odd to ten or something. So we're playing Parramatta, and you know, I become the first player to play. Who did you just play to get into the group? Brisbane. Yeah. We play. I played for both teams in the same team. But we we go down to we go down to uh, when's breakfast grand final breakfast Thursday morning. We come up Wednesday, so we stay out at Coogee so sort of Wednesday to Saturday, and then from Saturday night we go out to the Pullman at Homebush. Mate, it was like. I remember sitting there on like a Thursday or Friday reading the paper going, boys, does anyone know who a para are playing in the grand final this week? Like the madness yeah, around. Power, yeah. the, but one thing about when the Blue and Gold Army are up and about like the, the, and the run you guys are on and the, yeah. the craziness and hysteria it caused in the, yeah. in the community. Fuck, it must have felt good to it beat w- us because w- it was just like, but, even though we were going like, fuck me, dude. Look but we were, shit. we were happy because was, we was flying under the radar, you know what I mean? Yeah. But th- that was huge, you know, the oh. civic receptions you had and the, yeah. the crowds you had at training. It, like it, was ama- it, was, it would have been an amazing week to be a it part of, even though. It was awesome, yeah. but it, looking back, like probably would have maybe said no to a few things because yeah. the end though, he said, boys, this is going to be the craziest week of your life. Either enjoy it, either let it do your head in or enjoy it. He goes, fucking, there's no pressure here. He's all got here. You know how to play footy. Let's just have fun yeah. with it. But there was 45, as you know, yeah. like how many people want to party, yeah. especially the madness of Parramatta being back in a grand final since however fucking long. Oh, well, not so much. Ten years. Winning one, whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was that was heavy, heavy, like hysteria and pressure to the point where we were going, fucking, we, we have to win. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Mate, the next day after the parade, if if I didn't know what happened the day before, it was, it was like we won. won. Well, I remember, I remember too. This because I'm a widow. I remember early in the week what you said exactly. Then you, on a Fox Sports interview, you said Orlando said, "Can you let you do your head in on just enjoy it?" You yeah, went, yeah. "I'm pretty sure I'll just enjoy it." Yeah. Uh, and then that at the parade or, or the re- reception the next day or the Monday, um, I seen down like, a couple of days later they replayed on Fox, and you were saying. Look at this, you would have thought we'd won it. And yeah. they looked out at Paramount and all there. Yeah, it was like 10,000 like people there. Um, we got a bus in there and they fed, like kept all the people away from barricade through and then a presentation. And I'm going to the boys, we, got, we lost. Exactly. We lost. We're driving around the top of a bus. <laughs> We're going like this. I'm throwing shit off the bus. I'm going, we lost. <laughs> we lost. And everyone's doing car, like down the front of the bus, they're like some gym, gymnast yes, team in Paragi. Doing flips and that, I'm going. What the fuck? Imagine we won. Yeah. There'd be three more people in. It's a, it's, a, it's a crazy game. I remember. I, I I'd lost two grand finals early in my career at the Chooks. And you go into those games when you're a bit younger, thinking, "Geez, I hope, I hope things go our way." I hope things, you know, I'd sort of played it because I played at both clubs. I remember being really confident. Um, just but you're just older, you know. Yeah. And it was a weird game. We sort of we shot away and were quite comfortable uh, in the lead. You, you scored early in the second half. 
and then GI scores again. So we'll be straight to, away. Yeah. yeah, and we started. You That's score right. early, gets back to about twelve six, I think, or twelve four or something like that. So it gives you life. And the crowd was ninety five percent para. Yeah. So the, now the crowd's back in it because we took the crowd out in the first half, and then GI virtually scores in the next set. We go down there, so it sucks the life out yeah. of it. And we just it was back and forth. Then you know, not much happening, and we control the game. But then you, oh, did you just get two tries that game? Um, well, there might have been. Might have been Joel Fui Reddy. scored something, didn't he? Fui score. Fui, but Fui then scores in the corner. Because you, you score, there's another yeah. try down at your right hand side, and then Fui scores. Yeah, it felt like we back, had a momentous come, block for yeah, that 10 minutes. Last 10 minutes. It wasn't minutes. enough time. But it was like that. It was like you mm-hmm. did not, not, I shouldn't say do nothing, but for lack of a better of a term, yeah. you didn't fire a shot. And then when you realise, shit, we've got to go now. And then well, you, you had, us, used, had us on the back foot for that. We'll just hang, we'll just hold it on. Yeah, you know what I mean? It would have made a uh, nice coming. victory to. Be under the pump and then yeah. the siren goes, thank fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was. Yeah. And because I remember when Fui scored, the fucking roar. Oh, I remember coming I over know. from the left-hand side and going, boy, look, I remember oh, grabbing the boys, yeah. we ain't fucking <laughs> losing this, you know? I, like, I'm not coming from like, yeah, this, might, this, it's my, for you. this is my yeah. last chance in my career, you know, and I ain't losing against these pricks, you know? <laughs> but I lose the boys. But, but could not hear. It was like, all the boys yeah. remember hearing that. He see me going, yeah. You couldn't no hear because it, it was so loud, the cheer. Yeah, it was a, that was a big day, man. I remember that whole... But we got fucking on the way there and Hainsey's forgot his boots. boots. And we're on the way there and everyone's paying. How do you forget your boots? He'll be right. Someone will get him some fucking boots. Really, yeah. he can wear some other boots today. Like, How yeah. do you forget your boots? Oh, I don't know. It, me and him were getting a haircut the night before. Some bloke came around and he knew and he was doing everyone's hair. I said, fucking give me one. He's sitting there, me and Hainsey just sitting there. <laughs> just looking at Hainsey thinking, look at this fucking... <laughs> Unbelievable athlete. He could not be more rat's ass no. right now. And, <laughs> and mate, I have to think of a couple of Hainsey's blocks of form. He did it only in another 2014, but I've never seen anyone. That's domination. In that, that season, that form he had, I've never seen form like that from anyone, even Andrew Johns. That block, I've never seen anyone in, in that. Looked like a kid who went through form. puberty early and was just dancing around yeah. all the kids who haven't gone haven't through gone puberty. Just yet. too big, <laughs> it's a bit too talented. But so fast, yeah. and, and and he's natural. I always thought this about Hansy when they started putting he, putting him in pivotal roles. I thought that doesn't suit him to be an organizer of other troops. Just wants to run. Just let the fucking bloke be instinctual and react off shit, because that's when he's a gun. Yeah. You can't fucking. He doesn't know what he's going to do. No so one else does. Fun. But when he's got to organize troops for the next play, 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 and think of that, fucking takes away yeah. all that yeah. magic. Yeah. I reckon. I go. So, how the feeling was? I I know I'm sincerely. I one thing Bellyache said, we win the game. I'm talking about, obviously, it's about winning. One thing Guru uh, Bellyache said to the Moody once said, one thing Finch he never did, when he came here, he never bagged anyone from Parramatta. Bellyache thought that was, I guess, one thing he was really impressed by me. You know, just one him. thing that he's seen. Because I remember some, the reason I left was for me. Things probably weren't helping me there, but I'd lost a bit of fire. I'd always been a big fish in a small pond. Now, when I go to Melbourne, I'm the, you know, I need, you know, they don't need me there. We'd, we'd like to have you to. Love to play for us, Finchy, but yeah. we, we don't need you. You know, yeah. we, we can get someone else to fill the spot. So, and I'd lost two grand finals. So when I won, obviously I was over the moon. But obviously, I knew how how you boys were feeling. How how was that when you when you lost uh, the grand final? Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, that was a, the sec, that and the origin, the two games that really stand out. Yeah, um, just yeah, just to have that year, that roller coaster year, and to be involved in that. They were calling it the Parramatta Juggernaut yeah. type thing, and, and it was. It was just a it, mate. We, honestly, it, this is what it felt like. Like it sounds a bit weird, but it felt like there was a big monstrous ball rolling right, and we just jump into it for game day and just steamroll with it, and then jump back out for the mm. week. And it, mate, we would turn up the games. I didn't even pack my when it was when it's do or die. You usually pack your Mad Monday clothes, you know. We weren't it's even packing. Winning. I was saying we were definitely winning. Like and I've never felt like that in footy. I was turning up watching Hainsey turn up fucking. Joking around, thinking this place gonna fucking just blitz that whole team today. Had no, never nervous. Was unreal. But you had about six or seven do or die games there just yeah. to make the finals. Yeah, we were just like fuck it. Everyone thinks we're shit. Let's just go for it. And mate, we played the best footy we've ever played. And it was it was really tough to go yeah. from that elation and all that yeah. hype every week for twelve weeks in a row, whatever yeah. it was, to the fucking opposite. Mm. Like in one fucking second, you know. Well, mate, you, mm. how do you feel then? You find out the following year, Storm are over the salary cap. How's that sit uh, with you guys at Paris? I didn't give a fuck. You didn't care. Oh, it didn't bother me. I, I think. I remember you sent me a message going, hey, Finchie, can you just text me your ring up when you get a chance? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I just said, fuck off. <laughs> 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 but I was fucking you know. Yeah. No, but I, I thought, 
I thought, like... Because everyone does it. How can you not say you've won the grand final? Yeah. Like, every, I, I, everyone is trying to get as many people to their club to mm. win as many games as possible. Any, as long as they get them on the field and they fucking win and people cheer for them, they're happy. Yeah. I you, you know what I was disappointed I about? I just came from Parra and the Roosters. It was the only time in my career I wasn't under the table. <laughs> yeah, Everyone. Yeah. And I thought, that's how shit I yeah. am. Like, that's what I used to they're say spent, They spent all this money and I couldn't even get a lick at anything. That's I know. I was like, they're saying, oh, uh, Nick Pelosi and the, the brown paper bags. I'm thinking, fucking, yeah. I haven't seen yeah, one. Right there. <laughs> well, that's from the Heine we get on, uh, to stir him up when we were on Fox Sports. And, yeah. Because it'd be filthy at me for... I said, mate, the best thing is, Honey, not only did I win the grand final, I got a boat and a car as well. It was great. And I said, what are you talking about, Honey? They're still paying you and you're yeah, fucking... Fuck you're, you retired 10 years ago. Um, but, yeah, obviously, I know... I know I remember Toddy, um, Toddy Lowry come down. Poor old... Talk about a double whimmy for Toddy Lowry. Toddy, Toddy Lowry's in Paramount's team 09. Yep. He comes down... 2010. All yep. pre-season, he's got to see photos and yeah. videos of us, us beating him. And then 2010, we lose the salary cup. He's got to play for nothing oh. because of what we did the year before against him when he lost it, you I know what I mean? I thought of that. Yeah, but, but I remember he sat down in the front of the team and, and I got beat by the 07 team when I was at Paramount to get into the grand yeah. final. And, and I remember Toddy saying, mate, you could easily see a, a former player or, or someone like me could be filthy on last year. He said, but I know why he has won the comp because how hard the training yeah, yeah. was horrendous. That's what there. Toddy said to me. He goes, he, goes, horrendous. he goes, you know how close we were to like that momentum at the end there to maybe if we had 10 more minutes to get a try and win that GF. He goes, when I went down there, he goes, oh, I've changed my mind. He goes, that was that close, but it was that miles far. apart. He goes, the yeah. fucking, the way they trained down there, it's, di- it's just different. Yeah, good. I think the, the play 2010, you retired in the 2010, 2011? I yeah. played till the end of 2010, yep. And then I trained for the pre-season yeah. under Kearney. Yeah. The, it was, that was the hardest pre yeah. That's the hardest pre-season I've ever done. He's hard and sticky. He's hard and Daniel Anson, everyone. That was hard. And then I, we had a fucking, like an SAS thing coming up, like a three-day um, sleep deprivation yeah. camp. And I was like already in like two minds. And I remember waking up hungover on a, mon- on a Sunday and we had training on the Monday and, and the Tuesday we'll go into this camp. And I rang fucking Steve Kenny on Monday and said, I'm finished, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> and I just quit and that's it. I didn't yeah. tell you, do you want to come and do a... I said, no. Nah. I said, fucking turn my phone off and... Just had enough. And then I walked out the front and so, one June I knew where I lived and he parked there and they'd all knew and they'd oh, fucking... Mm. I walked out to a shit storm. Yeah. But I, I would have bowed out no one would have known shit. Yeah. You know, but... um. But, yeah. I, but I think that's... I, mate, I had a shit knee. I was trying to train yeah. with this hard training and, and I was older and I was thinking, I'm not dragging this through the season. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm done. It's too hard. You understand yeah. how. And you know what? It's, it's better to do that than sit there and fucking take the cash. Oh, yeah. You mate, you're a winger. Right like, oh, you fucking sl- oh, can't be a slow yeah. winger. You can't yeah. be slow with a hobble. Like, you yeah. got to be fast. And like, my turn to chase. What, what was the feeling once you, you made it? was relief. Was it, you know? Oh, it was the best ever. Yeah, was. I did nothing for a month. And I remember I've done nothing for seven years. And I remember I've always wanted to have record it properly in a studio, pay good money to go to a proper yeah. studio. I don't give a fuck if I sell one album. Mm. I won't even sell it. I just want to do it and have that experience because it's my favourite thing in the yeah. world. And I just booked in to do that so I couldn't say no. Yeah. I had to say, mate, I got offered to do fucking because I just finished footy, you're still like you're getting jobs here and there in the media. I got offered to read the fucking sport on the weekends for channel seven. Like I think Mel McLaughlin yeah. does now. How did well, you, no, you go if you can't read? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I went and done the readings and everything went yeah. good and the, my contact leave, left and went to Channel 10. I was going to be doing that, but they offered that for me and I said, I can't. I've booked in to do this music Gigs. thing. And like, so I'm, mate, we'll be paying you not to worry about that. Yeah. I'm like, mate, I've got to do it. Off and that's what you loved. Yeah, I just wanted to do that for a month. So yeah. I went away and done that. And then um, a couple of years later, I was like, mate, my body's feeling good. Like I'm healed. I started training. Chucky, you know, my mate Chucky, yeah. neck man, yeah. my sling man. <laughs> He, uh, he said, um, he goes, why don't you play again? I was yeah. like, down at Cronulla? Right. Yeah, had a heaps good season down there. The back went on you? <laughs> oh, mate. I pop- yeah, the back went, but I popped a- the worst thing was I popped a rib. And have you ever had a rib? Have you no, ever I never made tackles. Fuck. Or ran it. I did revive it. Somehow it popped. And yeah. I'll tell you what, it's like, I don't, I don't know about childbirth, but <laughs> fucking hell, man. It was just so painful. It crippled me. I remember, uh, well, as, as you look back now, how do you look back on your career? Mate, with regrets. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. You I, like, uh, just, in, t- in terms of regret, regret me, what do you regret? Do you think you could have worked in? For me to have been considered as someone, uh, as a uh, regular good player in the game. Which you were. They say, they say, oh, mate, on his day or whatever, mm. not 
consistent, which is that's how I was. I just wasn't consistent. I wish I for ten year a ten year block just did what I did in 05 and yeah. just go. I kind of it was a whirlwind for me. So I went from not playing footy and not going to school to all of a sudden and being in a band to all of a sudden in the professional thing. It took me three or four years to when I get back to Para. Okay, this is what it's about. I came good too late type thing. Yeah. I wish I got my head around it earlier, knuckled down for ten years, then maybe. I would have had an easier run. Now I'm very lucky that the business I'm in now, I'm okay that way. But initially, it's like yeah, I could have made some more rep teams and got some better contracts and yeah. maybe still be involved in the game a bit more. But I always needed. You to might regret not what you apply yourself more. Or? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like that. Like now that you look back in hindsight and you see that, and block it's easier now, isn't it? Like yeah, because now I can go. Oh, I should have just done that for ten years. But when I was in it, Finchie made. Oh, some days it was such a fucking battle for me to to go. Like for me to get up every day at Cronulla and drive the fucking King's Ro- King George's Road, hating footy the whole way yeah. going. Not hating footy, but like I gotta wishing go you're somewhere else. I gotta go do. This. I don't want to do this, yeah. man. Like fuck. Like, and then to finally make a call on it and not, mate, it was just yeah. like I just didn't have any worries anymore. What well, gives you a chance to, to do when you spoke about music? There's some things you love, and and I remember you telling me, you know, there's there's footy players who do stuff outside of footy, might like the horses, might like whatever. But you always said you're a musician who played footy. <laughs> you know, people might be footy I was playing a smart ass to the journo one day and he was up me for, oh, why didn't you do this? And I yeah. said, oh, because I'm a struggling muser playing footy to pay the bills and I fucking should never yeah. have said it. But I remember, you, but you loved your music, didn't you? And, and your bands, that's something you are yeah, always yeah, interested in yeah. through your whole career. Yeah, before my first memory is music. Dad, yeah. when I was four, I got a drum kit for my birthday. So I've always been around it. Dad was always playing guitar in bands yeah. and stuff. Dad played in the Lime Spiders. Yeah. He was jamming in the garage. I was I was playing drums to dad's bands and yeah. stuff and just having a ball and yeah. thinking that was a big part of it. So yeah. I was like, fuck, I was doing it before I got serious with footy. I'd like to go back to yeah. it. It was fucking unreal. And you had a band called Shinabi, I remember. Shinabi. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you also had the three-day growth. You were yeah, your brother and your dad. Band, yeah, yeah. Now I've got to remember, I used to come to a couple of gigs because I just wanted to come and drink with your dad. Um, <laughs> Get the red rope around you for the legends. And that's section. what I sit there, I go... Uh, Where's the red rope, senior? I go, excuse me, can we get some rope out here? And me and you, me and you are senior in, for a VIP area. <laughs> but I remember, um, what's that joint there at Ramsgate, the intersection? Mm. We're down there. We played Friday night against the Dogs. We beat them. You got a gig there Saturday. Oh, yeah, it's when Brad, remember Brad Moran, Moz bit um, yeah. tomorrow. So we win. We're down there Saturday. And I come down. You go, come down, get on the drink. That's drink. right. Yeah. And then, and seniors invited um, Brett Kenny. Yeah, that's So I'm right. sitting there going, fucking, there's no way I'm talking to you once I'm down. <laughs> Curious, like, come, come buy me a beer. I said, buy your own. I'm with, I'm with you, Dad. And Brett Kenny said, this is awesome. And you were, pl- we were on the piss all day. And then you played at night, the set at night. Anyway, I remember, I remember it vividly because I was just like in awe around Brett Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, and it was awesome. We had a great day together. Two weeks later, we'll play our first um, semi-final. Brett Kenny's on the back page going, the only thing holding back Parramatta from making the, winning the comp is, is the halves, Tim Smith and Brett Finch. And I was like, I was on the drink with you. I was on the drink with you. That's just like a oh, I remember being devastated. But I remember at the time, I said, did you see this? And you were laughing because I'd been big noting that me and him were better. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Brett Kenny in best face yeah. and he just went, shot me straight. Yeah, yeah but, I used to get the shits with uh, that. Because I grew, obviously growing up and going and seeing them guys like play their first grade and that. I kind of was really dirty that he did that because yeah. I was like, you know how you know they're going to ring you for a quote. Yeah. They know that Pricey and Bert will say something and it's news and people buy the papers. I was like, fuck, they're the halfback. Like, back them, don't say yeah. that because I twisted. But your dad's been very good like that, and he's never. Oh, he's always still. Like, he's never been one who's like been that, critical, yeah. you know. Well, Bert, I don't think he's really been spiteful. Just doesn't. He just will say something, and that's the headline. Mm. And like, yeah, well, mate, they got rid of them. Maybe but fucking just say something positive, mm. mate. Even if you don't. Think they're the best players. Say, mate, I, re- I think he's good at this and he can do this. Like, don't bag someone. Yeah. So open it. Like, look what that shit does to blokes like Timmy Smith and that. Yeah. It fucking send you into a fucking tailspin. Spiral, yeah. Mate, hey, do you still get around and play with your, your dad and your brother? Yeah, Is we, it? um, yeah, we play a bit of music too. It's good. Um, <laughs> no, we, um, we haven't lately, mate. This, honestly, this business is just too full on. That's good. But, um, um, dad and I were just saying we'll be good now that the COVID restrictions are easing. It takes a while to get a set of music together, like 20, 30 songs, and then we'll start playing pubs and clubs yeah. and that again. Once yeah. they start, yeah, easy. Um, mate, Instagram, so social media is something I have no idea with, but you're super funny on that. Like, uh, <laughs> full board, following. What's your, do, you, do you enjoy that sort of stuff? Or yeah, I just get a reaction. I 
put, put a poster up or yeah. a picture and it's amazing what happens in the comment yeah. section after it. Like I said, Twitter, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be sitting there with my missus and I'll go, watch this, I'll say yeah. there's something about because everyone is so triggered if you say Donald Trump. Trump. So I'll go, right, what can we say about Trump? Yeah. How good is Trump? <laughs> like, it started off, right, my, I like Trump, right? It started off, I, the only reason I started to like him was because everyone hated him. And I was like, I hope he fucking does something that sticks it up, everyone, and he wins. Like, everyone's bagging him, the media's, you know, you know what the media's like? I'm always against the media anyway, yeah. from footy, because we get the fucking worst case of it. And I just wanted him to win. Yeah. So every time I'd write something, and mate, the amount of people who've inboxed me, like, so upset that, I said, how good's Trump? Like, it's fucking words. Shut the fuck up. Snap out of it, for fuck's sake. Now, People are so, so serious. Like, I'll, I'll do a tweet, go away 24 hours, come back on. There's a fucking war going on under there. And I'm like, <laughs> people are fighting with people. Who them, they're fucking gone off. And they're like, this guy said this and there. I'm just watching this shit storm. Oh, because you said, like, how good's Trump? I said, how good's Trump? Now, it's, wait, what's it? So this is guru text people, is that right? What, oh, yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Do you just get, who's, no, who's so, do you find numbers? So, no, so... If someone, some people inbox me and say, oi, this bloke, he'll bite, he's a fucking snapper oh. or whatever, so I'll just start so going. What is it? And, you, mate, out of one out of 20 replies. Yeah. So you say, is it windy at yours? Who dat? Ha uh-huh, ha, funny. Who is it really? I'll tell you who I'm not first. And then if you believe me straight away, I'll get all rank. I, I win and you have to shut up from that point on. Know what I mean? And we just win together. Next one. Oh, uh, yeah, Are we on? Uh, yeah, swipe across left, yeah. Sorry it's so late, mate, but can't control the time. <laughs> Are you coming tomorrow? Who's that? Eric. What's your last name? Can't remember an Eric. My last name, nah. I've only been I've only ever been known as Eric. Why? What was the last name you used to? Have? <laughs> you gotta put it up on the you're gonna put it up on the screen. <laughs> oh mate. No, it's we'll get, just get those boring, put up, mate. But, but what is what's but you've always had that um where I was thinking, I like your sarcastic type. Weird humor, not weird humor. It's normal it's to weird. us. But my but father, my dad is funny. a weirdo, and my brother and I have just basically got his genes or whatever, and we're weird with him. He's, he's genes dad hides wearing it. Them out at night. Dad hides it. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could get in his genes. Um, well, we talk about some uh, career highlight. Do you have a career highlight? Career highlight. Um, that's a good question. I was thought maybe uh, make an origin. Maybe yeah. that's because it in terms of. Yeah, it's a big thing, eh? Hey? When you make origin, mate, I'll never forget when your when your head rocked into that, mm. that Parramatta there when you came and you'd been out for the three days before and you just looked like, like you looked death. like Alley Cat, like yeah. just Scuzz Cat. He was back. <laughs> I was like, fuck, he's going to do this. Yeah. And fuck it. It's funny because I knew I... It was just, it was so quick. Mm. You were there and then the next day we were playing mm. like, and you were still like, you would have been that. Oh, like, how did you feel fun. before the game? Awful. Awful. Now, yeah. you know what? I, a part of me goes... Because I'm a weirdo because I do it too. Yeah. You, Part you of go me, I go, I, this is perfect for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is a perfect situation. And I always had the, my head was, whatever the situation is, I can beat that. Yeah. Now, I know, like. That's the fight. That's the fight I'm I, yeah, I can yeah. beat it. Do we need to score a try? I'll pull off. I'll get the pass. Now, I might be intercepted. Now, nine yeah, yeah. times out of ten, I did, but every time I thought. I'd, yeah, yeah. And now, because I was coming in origin, it's, it's actually easy because. It's the best players in the comp. That's, that's so true, I need yeah. to do less. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and, and the scene was set, you know, like this yeah. is going to add to the, you know. Oh, and in fact, I, I was hung over and I was rattled. And the next day we did the walkthrough and I didn't, have any, like I didn't have any boots. And the best thing was I uh, get back to, um, we get back to the Crown Plaza. We go out all night, come home from the uh, Empire and I order a club sandwich and like a beer. Club sandwich comes and the lady goes, congratulations, what a great field goal. I said, do you want to see it again? She goes, yeah. I grabbed a club sandwich <laughs> and just field goal across the room, beetroot and fucking shit bacon went everywhere. Um, but that, yeah, that was a fucking... The origin is that you played with some great teammates. Um, name me supper. Give me a couple of your favourite teammates and why. Uh, mate, Benny Smith. Yeah. Um, just because, well, first of all, I didn't... He was training with us and that, but he was a younger guy and you kind of got your little groups that you hang with and that. Didn't know much of him. That we went tripping away, on a trip away to Mexico. And he said to me, I'll never forget this, but the first pre, he hadn't played first grade yet. He was about to come into the first grade squad after the trip away, go back to pre season. And he goes, Oi, Guru. I said, Hey, mate, like we've been out for a while and I hadn't spoken to him one on one like this. He goes, You just worry about running next year. I'll do all the tackling. And I just went, I fucking love this bloke. Yeah, you're my best mate. And mate, how fucking good was he? Yeah. Like, I remember we played um, the Dragons and against Gaznia and Cooper, I think, were the... Centers, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it was, it was Gaznia on our side, yeah. Benny and my side. 
And after the game, Gaz said to me, and we beat, we give it to him, I think, mm. and um, and Gaz couldn't get past Benny. Any every run, Benny just crab walked him and got yeah. him, smashed him. And he said to me after the game, he goes, "Mate, I've played obviously you're the best little." He goes, "No one's been yeah. as hard as that." It's just funny that because uh, well, Crossy, great mate of ours, Ryan Cross, Crossy yeah, yeah. always went good against Gaz. Yeah, Some, yeah. Like, you know they say styles make up fights. Yeah, you know, yeah, like 100%, 100%. you know, like ben, Benny had no, you know, Crossy, you know. They weren't ever thought of in Gaz's echelon because yeah. Gaz was a star. Yeah. But sometimes you always have that bloke who fucking Definitely, might yeah. not be seen as, as good as you, but you, you struggle with him. Yeah. One thing I love about Benny Smith, we'll go into the, the trip away now we're talking about Benny. Me, me, you, Benny Smith and Fletty Mateo go, go on a, a trip away for about two and a half weeks. We go to Austin, which is in Texas. Uh, we go to Dallas in Texas and we go to um, Vegas. Now... <laughs> If, if Benny's had a crook knee at the time, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was very up and down about his career and up and down in his moods. Like, so if we had a big night, like you'd see him the next day, he'd have these hour or two of just real dark. Darkness. Like, my knees fuck. My crew's over. My I've got it, I'm going home. And then he'd be like, "No, nah, we're going to be right. We're going to be yeah. right." And then he'd be like, oh, 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 and, "And we're just going like." Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and by the end of it, I'm just like, "Fuck this!" Mate. I remember he loved saying he'd order a vodka red bull. You'd just go, I said no ice, and pull the ice out of it and skull. Uh, but I, we got to the point where we get to Vegas, we had the camera, and I said, well, I started taking photos of Benny because the progression of his night would be going, I'm not going out, no way, let's go. How good is this? <laughs> get me home, my knee's sore, I've had enough, I'm booking flights, I'm going home, I'm done. But we bumped the Melbourne Demons. We're at, um, we're at one of the casinos, where we're at. Uh, uh, the- the one with the ghost bar on the top. Yeah, that, that's it's off the um, play the Playboy one. Yeah. Is it the Playboy man. Yeah, Playboy. It's Playboy. Playboy. Yeah, Palms. Yeah. The Palms. Palms. It is. Yeah, it's got the Playboy, Playboy bunny on it. Yeah. Playboy nightclub there, and, and we're up on the the ghost bar at the top. Yeah, and we're all there, and, and we're we're just on the you know we've been away for two weeks, so we're just trying to warm back up for the night, and we're getting you're getting drunk pretty quick. You know, hitting us up. The yeah. tombstones are vodka, Red Bull. Ooh. No ice. Yeah, just be skull. And the next day you're in the tombstone. Yeah, you'd be like a tombstone. <laughs> you'd be fucking knocked out. Anyway, and we bumped the Melbourne Demons, and David Neitz is there, who was the captain uh, of Melbourne Demons, and who's a very successful player. He's retired now. This in 2008. And they come over and go, hey, Finch, yeah, hang on, boys, what are you doing here? And, and I said, oh, Guru, this is Demons, boys. Said, and, we, and we go, Benny. <laughs> You've met that. And Benny goes to reach across <laughs> to shake David Neitz's hand. <laughs> And just go, <laughs> and, and hits the deck, uh, and he's like flat, that. like that. The hands out, the goes, hello mate. And uh, just, uh, I remember looking up, and the black started his hand out, and he was just looking down. But, and like, but it's not like he bounced back up. He, he just laid there, and they go, "Is he all right?" <laughs> uh, we're gonna die, or he's all right. Just take him back off to the side. But we found him. He goes, mate. But, but we'd find him. Remember, um, found, you found him getting the score. Like Benny would yeah. find him get the score. And he would say to the security guy, "Go on, go." Because I always look after him when he's like that. Because he's not a big – he doesn't drink all the time. So when he does, he rips in and he loses it. Yeah, I used to say he used to crab walk. You know, instead of walking straight, <laughs> yeah. he'd be walking – take oh. 10 metres Take ten minutes to get the five metres. Big crab. But he, he, was, he was a great teammate and, and yeah. such a lovely bloke. Mate, if he didn't have knee injuries, he would have played rep footy. He nearly played country there one year. I think he was being talked about. And, mate, that kind of bloke in your team, uh, in an origin team him, with yeah. that defence, fucking no one's getting past it. Uh, any other teammates you love playing with? I you know, just love being in the – Club Obviously with. yourself, like you were good for me in regards to like you be a fucking guru. And I'm like, oh fucker, it made me switch on, and then we'd have obviously the best yeah. times after it as well. So yeah. it was always good talking about that later. And uh, mate, Jeff Robson was another oh, one yeah. who a uh, bit of an unsung hero in terms yeah. of just so tough, and everyone's running at him yeah. because he's a halfback spot player, and he's whacking blokes. He's getting trodden on. <laughs> Some of the faces he'd pull mate. when he'd look at me as if, mate, can you go in for it's just awesome. one time? And I'd just go, fucking go in there for fucking three hours if you have to, you poor bastard. Where you'd say to me, fuck off, stay yeah, back in there, because I was always there. going, fuck me. <laughs> I'll pretend I couldn't see you. <laughs> what was that? I can't hear you. What about guys like Hindy and, and Kalis you played for a lot, long time with, didn't you? And you come sort of through with those guys? Yeah, I was always in awe of those blokes um, in terms of, and yourself, um, the passion and the day-to-day getting there. And Nate, Nate Kalis was the first bloke there, the last bloke to leave. Yep. Never whinged, always fucking positive and didn't say much. Wasn't a big pep talker, but yep. just you saw how hard he tried. Even yep. though athletically there's probably other guys bigger, stronger, faster, yep. no one was trying as hard as him. Yeah. Like, And I used to see just the 
the face on it and think, fuck, I'm, I'm having the worst runs for you, like yeah. off the penalty kickoffs. I'll have it. Like, you've yeah. done your job for today. Yeah. So I'd try and take that heat off from just in appreciation. Mate, Luke Burt's another one. H- him and Billy, Billy Slater's my favourite player of all time, Billy Slater, in modern game, because of his how from the time the – and blokes like yourself too, the time the fucking whistle goes – it's just fucking frantic. Like, he's trying to get there. He's everywhere. His anticipation's unbelievable. I, I, I was frantic in just telling other people to get there. You get there, you get there. Yeah, but, like, that that to me, like, having Birdie in the team just so into every second of the game. Like, I'll have a run. If I can, I'll switch off of fucking while they do that shit in there. I'll come back and do it again. He's just on the whole game. I used to be in awe of those blokes. Yeah. And Wade, Wade McKinnon was another one. Yeah. He's none, he was fucking... He had some skitters in him. Oh. Like, I could... Like, like, no, like, now, this is a pot option. Popcorn on the kettle back. I certainly could spit the dummy as good as anyone, but no, nah, he was it's like, yeah, he he and mate, he was um, he was a bit of an unsung hero for yeah. us too. He, he good did player, a lot of good, lot of good things he used to do in the game. Yeah, any other trips away or highlights you can remember being on any fun? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> getting kicked out of uh, <laughs> mate. There's heaps of them. This heap. mate, one of the funniest. The, so the funniest thing the. Thing I've laughed at the most in my life was that morning we were hung over him in the pool at Caesar's <laughs> Palace and there's this bloke and he looked like one of these blokes who had – something was going where he was real big. Like he was a big human, he had big feet mm-hmm. and he was passed out on the fucking like the lounge, chair yeah, next the to pool. the pool. Yeah. He must have had a fucking mammoth night and he was just like <laughs> – just like, uh, and next minute I just look up and you, we're still blind, it's daytime and you're next to his face <laughs> like that. In a photo, and mate, I've got the photo. I fucking wish I was better prepared. I would have sent it in early. And there's a photo of you next to this big drunk, passed out fucking oaf. And you're, you're mate, the the laughing and the, oh, you know, when you think, have you ever mm. thought you're going to die from laughing? Yeah. That, I thought I was going to die because after the benders we yeah. had, that was after the night where we went after a big day drink mm. at that fucking pool party. Oh. We went to the fucking nightclub and we had to do it by a three bottle minimum and we were too pissed to have three bottles of vodka between mm. us and I just remember <laughs> these people behind us talking and, and you said to me, Goo, we've got to go, I'm blind and I'm like, I oh, we're me. all blind, we're all, we're, everyone's blind, you'll be right and you went, no, 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 I can't see yeah. and I had to, you couldn't see, he was like, mate, it's all, all blank, legs. it's all blank and and we're walking and you're that piece of people yelling shit and you're just abusing them on the way out. I'm like, fuck it. I remember you go, mate, I can't, I'm ready to go. You said this, this, and I said, mate, guru, look down at your shoes. You had just like dinner black shoes oh, with no, no socks. socks. Oh. I said, mate, but I remember we got back. I remember one night, <coughs> I do remember that, that the couch, uh, sorry, the bloke was asleep because the funny thing is, if that bloke wakes up and gets hold of me, he's going to tear me in too. <laughs> And I'll be terrified. <laughs> but he's this cheeky last as he's sleeping. I'm the toughest bloke ever. <laughs> but I remember we got um, we got this room, and usually you just go like two, double, you know, the, yeah. the double two double beds, two double beds in room. And anyway, we, we somehow I fucking mangled our way into this like a Scarface suite and yeah. had the four rooms. Right. And I was said, well, I'm, I organised it. I'm yeah, getting the top got, room yeah. up the top of the stairs, and <laughs> which is the grass room. Anyway, you come home early. <laughs> Yeah. One night, I I'm and you, one night in you the went up, and I went up, and I couldn't get into the room. <laughs> yes. You could lock the doors from, yeah. you know, because they were two from different two rooms. But what you didn't know was, I could lock from my side. So I thought you're going <laughs> to lock the room. That's you, right. You can. I can't get in, but I can close my door. Then you, you can't, can't get, get in, in motherfucker. Yes, I, so, but my vindictive thing is, yeah, you think you fucking yeah, got me. Yeah, you got so me. That, yeah, you may have won the battle, but I'm going to win the war. Didn't you what? And remember, you were, begging, you were trying to ring us <laughs> because it was under my name. They couldn't give you a card because it's under my. And you go, mate, I know him. And I'm going, and you're begging on the door next morning. Never heard of him, sir. Mate, Don't let him in. Fucking He's I was hung in there going, in. I'm hung as I need to get outside the <laughs> fucking air. And I just wouldn't, couldn't get out. I was just banging. Oh, <laughs> fucking let me out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, oh, mate, that was good fun. <laughs> mate, we, that, um, that and then when we got kicked out of Austin, um, yeah. well, we weren't really doing much, right? Oh, I think we were just loud. Yeah. And it, they, they finish, over in America, everything finishes early, doesn't it? And we're like, yeah. used to go until the fucking sun comes yeah. up. What, the, what do you do now? So we're, we're all inside and we're just yahooing. And the fucking, he looked like the pallbearer from The Undertaker. Yeah. And he's coming and going out. I'm like, mate, let us sleep. It's fucking yeah. two o'clock. Let us, let us. He goes, I'm here in the morning, seven in the morning, knock. We had to get our yeah. shit out. And what about the abuse? He caught yeah, on the way I, I must admit, back, back then. <laughs> mate, uh, when when, when, when Ben Smith, sleepers. Fleddy Mateo and Guru were standing in front of me, I'm extremely brave. <laughs> and I was absolutely <laughs> sledging him. Um, yeah, there's some great trips. And, they're, they're, you know, I look back now. The great memories to take as as much as like you, you do things that you 
probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to do if, if you, you weren't playing for yeah, you. So it was a right. great life to live. That's right, yeah. In hindsight, yeah, like you say, you have a few regrets. Like, you wouldn't have done as much of it. But and then yeah. sometimes you wouldn't have that fun That's if you right. weren't like if you, that. You if know? you weren't like that. So, yeah, what can you say other than you live and learn, I guess? Mate, me and you were pretty slim. Going through, pretty like single for a lot of our careers. Or, you know, we're settling down wasn't the things. But you're, you're in a new relationship now. It's all going good, mate. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to tell anybody. You want to tell no, her cut that part out? Uh, yeah, Laura, she's a legend. She's, um, I'd known her for a while, a little <clears> bit. And um, she ended up, our first date was she came to my mum's 60th. <laughs> I picked her up from Leppington Station. She caught on the train. I thought, fuck, she's a keeper, this one. Because I something for work, I couldn't get there. She goes, oh, all right. Well, I could hear her in her voice, but she jumped on the train. She got there, picked her from Leppington. She went, mate, where the fuck am I? Like, it's that far out west from yeah. the city. She worked in the city. And now she lives out here with me, so, at um, Spring Farm there. But, um, yeah, she's a legend. She was a former athlete, so mm. she was different to me. She was really keen committed. and very committed <laughs> and, like, She's like that in life too, where I'm, I'm like I was a little bit with footy yeah. and that, but obviously with this business I can't be. But it's good, mate. She's cool. She kind of helps me with the admin. She's very good at admin, so she takes the noise away from yeah. the work stuff, and it's good. Well, thanks, mate. Let's get the uh, we got the questions from the fans. Oh, fan questions. Yeah. It's a great setup. Isn't it? What yeah. cameras are they? Four K. Oh, yeah. Shoot the viewers, this is. The wife, Ellie Johnson. Also known, also known as my chief financial oh, officer yeah. and boss. Now, see so with some fan, you know, you know, it's a good one. I get uh, asked these, and there's always ones about fucking just go like, come, yeah, better, no, yeah, come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> well, you think I'm going to ask that? And it's going to go on that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one. How does it feel to be a, a junior, and you never thought, and not to have say your own? I know it's your own name, but your same name as your dad. You know. Like, is it didn't think of it no, until no. footy, and yeah. then it became a big thing. Like, because yeah. like, when you're playing junior footy, yeah, people I guess talk about the oh it's the same name as your dad. That yeah. next minute I'm in the same club and the same number, you know, playing similar style to dad, and obviously he was better. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, mate, I didn't really think of it until it became a thing in the media, really. To be yeah. honest, yeah. Uh, did you go to Westfield Sports High? I did for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, that was the best, good. Best part of your days there, by the sound of it, you weren't there very often. I was. I. I no, that, that taught me a lot about footy because that was coming into like rep footy age, like 15 and whatever. And we had Scott Marlowe and Rod uh, uh, Rod Wright, mm. whose name is Rocket as well. Um, and he's a champion. Like, those two blokes taught us a lot about footy in the early years. Definitely in the, fell into the, the footy stuff right later on. Do you know a Ryan Al- Algy? Algy? Ryan Algy, yeah. That's, uh, show me the photo. Like right, so the question was, what's it like being the third best player in your family behind your dad and brother? <laughs> so I thought it must be yeah. someone, you know. Yeah. Um, mate, I'll tell you something. That's not a fucking joke. That's, yeah. that's no joke. My brother, he's, uh, he's got the skill set of a halfback. Yeah. Like he's, he can pass great both ways. Uh, very light on his feet. Awesome explosive power. Basically yeah. had dad and I covered in, in every way. Yeah. But he broke his neck. neck yeah, and he, he luckily he can walk. And that was in '06, wasn't it? That was '06. I was in camp for the yeah. Origin, and um, that's why that, that you don't understand how yeah. good that field goal was for me yeah. personally. Like going through all that, I yeah. fucking made them come back with fight and hug oh, Joe when they get the penalty in. and score, and then you kick that. It was just like, <gasps> thank God. There's a photo of you actually, everyone in there, and my big hands in like <laughs> that, and my tats like down there. He's back, the big. Team man, uh, um, mate, we've got one here. This is hilarious from what you're talking about earlier. How hurt were you when Trump lost the election? <laughs> to show. Yeah, Top six blokes you go on a bend with or a trip that you played with? Oh, yourself. Um, I'll tell you what, big Timmy Manor, yeah. he doesn't drink a lot, but he's he there gets, for you. He he's the bloke that looks simple. after you, mate. He's just got his head on a swivel, he knows what's going on, he's got everything sussed out. Yeah. Very safe when the big team ends is around. Um, will you do a live version of his Fooey Fooey Moy Moy song? <laughs> I uh, actually saw a photo of Fui the other day, and he's retired now. I think finally, yeah. Um, and he's he's enjoying retirement by the look of things. Let yeah. me just say that much. Has anyone from uh, your random text messages seen them on his your Insta? Yes, yep, a couple have. Yep, definitely. Um, I don't tag him just because I think everyone would hassle him. Yeah. But, but yeah, a few have caught me out. Yeah. Uh, did you ever play against the Warriors in New Zealand? Uh, mate, once or twice out of however many years I played. <laughs> That's not, which goes that into, this goes into this next question. Is it true you used to fake an injury to get out of going to Auckland to play the Warriors? 
not quite, kind of, but not quite. No, I, I um, missed a couple there where the boys would be getting on the bus to go, and I'm walking out of the store back going, like, yeah, coach, the motherfuckers is like minus three degrees it over was there, the worst. and I just have three days off doing nothing. Uh, best player you played with in any any level? Um, best player I played with, fuck, that's a great question. Um, mate, probably Freddie. Yeah. Um, at, at, Freddie was on fire at the time, mm-hmm. and I played um, just the year they won the grand final. I played a couple of games with him there, mm-hmm. and just seeing. His control of a game, mate, fucking like nothing I've ever man. seen. He was, was such a presence on the field. Yeah. It was like he's going to do field, something and everyone man. knows it, but he couldn't stop it. Uh, how and why did you come up with Kota? Kota? Kota. 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 That's, Kota. Uh, yeah. um, King of trips away. I labelled myself, not because I'm a mad fucking bender head or anything, mm. but I just never missed a trip away. I never missed one. Yeah. I made sure if there was a trip away, I was on was it. Right. And I went to every however many fucking seasons. I think a couple of years there we didn't have one. Um, but, yeah, other than that, um you didn't, didn't, didn't finish off the trip away when I thought it was great that I'd go to New York and when everyone went home. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I landed in New York and you boys were back in Sydney <laughs> and I was right. like, I'm on my own here, no accommodation, oh. and I cried myself to sleep. <laughs> Ended up staying for another two weeks. Uh, but your old man rips on the guitar. What's the best thing you've seen him play? On the guitar? Um, I like it when he plays his Pink Floyd song. Oh, I can't remember the name. So it was one, a real well-known one. Dun, dun, dun. And he just—he's got the sound on his get on his amp, perfect, exactly like the sound it is in the song. And he plays it, and it just sounds like the bloke playing it. So, yeah. some Pink Floyd song. Um, if you could change anything about your career, what would it be? Um, what did we say before? More um, what's the word? Apply yourself a bit more. More applicable. Um, uh, and the last more one present. here, last one here that I can actually read out. What? What he felt after finding out that Melbourne got done with the salary cap in the GF. I just thought they got busted and no one else did. <laughs> That's it. Eric Grace Jr., thanks for Thank spending you, time, mate. It's great to see good you. See you um, good to see you doing well. And um, I'm going to have to invest a bit of time and look at these text messages because yeah. I've got no idea I'd be you, a perfect you're up, So kid. you're on Instagram now, are you? It is, but it's but the, usually the missus. Ellie runs it, yeah. I mean, Get just, on there and have some funny shit yeah. on Instagram, some good stuff going on. But uh, thanks for joining us, mate, and thanks we'll uh, me. hopefully hear from you soon. No worries, Ledger. To hear from you soon. No worries, Ledger.